now people should be able to hear okay hello good morning i guess we'll have to tell have someone tell us if they can hear you seems how i also cannot tell got your voices yay bluesy good we are looking at some uh materials that pacific plankton sent me on i guess they arrived on thursday and um and then another set of samples that are in here as well that are from, I guess, the week before. So, um, and I was just trying to figure out what this thing was and I have no idea. So I'm just gonna pretend it doesn't exist and move on. Or um, you could take a picture of it and then we can look it up later. I suppose. Uh, it is kind of weird looking. It's super weird looking to me. The spines are very strange. Uh, I guess we could look at it and keep it. Hang on. Start starting with, right off with a picture. Well, you know. Look at that! Isn't that crazy? Which part's crazy? <laughs> that I zoomed in. Spines. The the spines are crazy. Oh yeah, they have really strange spines. They're kind of like the. Um, they're kind of like the skeletonema spines. Huh. Little, like, straight pin sort of looking things. Yeah. Okay. Seven, seven. It's gonna look okay, I guess. Yeah, it's gonna look great. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, you're hearing the voice of Pacific Plankton. Here Good morning. Visiting with me um, through through chat or through vocals, <laughs> and um, let's see. Yeah. So these are some plankton samples, and there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. Uh, I'd say. Just browsing around in here, I found maybe a dozen things that I haven't seen in any of the samples you've sent me previously. Wow. Um, well, between like this one and the one before, right? Because um, yeah. I think we've seen like Stephanopixis on your um, on your streams, but not not except for just recently, right? Yeah. It just started showing up, and then here we have some. I also found, while I was browsing around a little bit earlier, before the stream started, um, a different kind of detillum. And I did not take a picture, but um, hopefully I can find it again. Um, because it had totally different, like instead of having the little eyelash spines around the outside, it had sort of mm -hmm. like a straight sheet, uh, like a fence that went around the outside edge. Um, which was oh. really, really weird. And I was like, oh, what's this? But it was definitely to tell him it had the, you know, sort of pokey bits that come in um, a long spine, triangle shape. It had all the other things, but it had like a totally different uh, fringe. Wow. Oh, that would be cool. Uh, yeah, no, it's just me in the lab today. Um, and then Pacific Plankton, who's is here virtually. <laughs> and, um, oh, that is so cool. Hey, Del, good morning. It's kind of the way it's been on the weekends for a while now. It's just me, which is, you know, I guess it's okay. Mm. We'll definitely be able to tell what this is um, from the photo. I mean, yeah. somebody's seen one of these before, I bet. Where's but, Anna? Yeah, she would know, probably. That'd be a good person to ask. Um, I wish I haven't seen her on the stream for a little while. But, um... I talk to her pretty much every day still through, um... You know, our normal sort of conversations. This is San Francisco Bay. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, Uncle Bill joined in. Uh, hey, Uncle Bill. There's a lot of chatter in the background that we can hear. Oh, my mic's hot. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm not even sure how I got here. I was in TKF. <laughs> well, I don't know how you got here either. <laughs> you're on stream with us now. Yeah, now you're in my channel during a stream. Oh, gosh. Okay. It's fine. I don't know what to call this. I'm just going to call it Mystery Diatom. I like that. Mystery Diatom. Uh, and then we'll just have to sort it out later, I guess. Yes. Or I guess I could just show it to somebody who might know what it is. And let's see. I think this um, this little stick thing that we're seeing right here is one of those gigantic, uh, super long diatoms that we saw last night. Just broken. Yeah, it's just a broken piece of one. But I actually found one uh, intact <gasps> on another slide. Or another stub uh -huh. uh, in this set. And then over here is this little star-shaped thing is actually a silica flagellate. Yeah. Oops. Let's see. Yeah, right here. Okay. I can zoom Are in they... on that. Yeah, it's got, it's still got its stuff on it. Yeah, so this is some material from, um, yeah. from March 1st was when it was collected and then uh, sent to me very rapidly. Um, <laughs> and then it's, uh, I split it, or rather Mallory split it, and then um, we digested half of it and we left half of it undigested. So that's just a practice that I use when I want to be able to see things that are sort of chain forming or I want to catch something in their life position and a lot of the lightly solicified diatoms, like this thing might not make it through processing, um, especially if we put that one? this one over here. The, oh, that one? oh yeah, with uh, those funny little spines. Yeah, that's, it's super lightly solicified. It's like, you know, just landing on the, the, um, the stub and drying out seems like it's sort of wrecked it a little bit. So I don't imagine that like putting it in some sort of a heavy acid is going to make it last very long. So, and then there's some silica flagellates actually all over here, a few of them. Yeah. And, Dick, um, like one of these. To you. Oh, that's the name of the silica flagellate? I think so. I think it's, it was so Dictyota, Dictyoka is the genus. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. They're cool. I'm not sure what that is. I hear your keyboard clicking. Oh, I think that's Uncle Bill. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was muted. <laughs> 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 and uh, in here we have a, the sort of curled one is a Ketoceros. Oh, yeah. It looks like all of the spines are pointed outward, which is kind of interesting. And yeah, then, so there's there's two that's that that curl like that, um, and there's one that makes these long, like curling, like almost um, like slinky shapes because they're debilis. Maybe otherwise it's curvicetus. No, maybe it's curva curvicetus. Yeah. Uh, so cool. Good news, everyone. Oh, I got a follow, apparently. Good um, news. And then there's a, uh, a Pseudonitsia chain right here. Mm. And it looks like this is a, um, a... Actually, there's two of them side by side. I think that's a row of Thalassia Syra that are linked together by the central process. And then there's another one over here, like a small different species where they're doing the same thing. You can see the, um, the connecting piece right there between them. 
So we usually see oh, them. Yeah. It's like a little strand of, like a necklace strand or something. It is. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, that's neat. Uh, and here's one of these big um, odontelloid things. Hemi Alice or Odontella like thing. Because that was Uncle Bill leaving. Um, that's here. It's oh, kind of a wow. cool looking diatom. We haven't seen this one. Uh, I mean, we've seen Odontella, right? But yeah. I don't think we've seen anything like this one before in the SEM. And yeah, that's the solitary one, I think think right it's usually on its own the one that we see here yeah so there's one that, that there's um there's one that just kind of drifts around on its own i mean sometimes they're dividing but they don't tend to make as long a chains i don't know i have to look it up ah, it's so cool yeah I mean, I've seen, it's got some sort of a girdle band wrapped around it right here. And I think that it probably maybe was split pretty recently from uh, another diatom because the other half of the valve is right there inside the girdle band still. Mm -hmm. And then That's... there's another, you know, connecting diatom over here. So and maybe make at least, mm -hmm. uh, at least colonies of two <laughs> or whatever or it's just dividing yeah or it could still Unless just be it's... not completely separated yet yeah and this valve is actually cracked open up here so Ooh. if we zoom in we can kind of see a little bit of the inside of the diatom Are you trying to look it up? I am. I am. I'm sitting here with my book. <laughs> All right. Oh, so it's either Mobilensis or Longicursus. I thought we saw a Mobilensis before and it was smaller. Let's see. Oh, so then this is Long Longicursus. Because it has, it has the the spines that come off of a point that rises up if they're more, if they're closer together where they come out of the valve face. That is true. Right? There's like the, the bump. Yeah. It looks like they have a little, um, like a little fork right at the end of the spine too. I don't know. That might also be a nice character to pick up on. Oh yeah. Let's see. Just take a picture of this little guy. And then I can kind of Warm. see what's going on in the chat, hopefully. They're talking about who's not here. <laughs> who's not here? <laughs> oh, Micah, died in the middle of birth. Well, it was dividing, so it was in the middle of cloning. I don't know, is that the same as birth? Um, I don't know. Let's see, so I did get some questions. Uh, that MSG said, what are we looking at right now? So we're looking at plankton samples on the scanning electron microscope from San Francisco Bay. And these are mostly diatoms, although we have seen some other things in here. Um, and uh, Blue says that it looks like a cigar ribbon. Uh, I guess maybe they mean the uh, Pseudonitia colony for that one. And my other graduate student's name is Laura, not Laurel or Lauren. She's from Columbia. Uh, but she's not here today, it's just me. And let's see. Rod Nadi? Rod Nadi? Rod Nadi says it's the first time here. Well, welcome in, Rod. It's nice to see you. Uh, oh, you're at work. Okay, well, you know. 
Um, yeah, on the voice chat with me is Pacific Plankton. Hello. Good morning. Oh, the mystery one. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what was going on with that mystery one. I guess we'll find out. So these um, large circular diatoms that are off to the left are Thalassia syra, and uh, they just landed on top of each other. That's not actually like um, how they live or anything. Uh, but these ones actually live in this sort of um, short colonies, apparently. Or maybe it's dividing and it hasn't completely separated. But this is one diatom cell, and this is another diatom cell. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Longicursus. Yeah, and we've got a name on it now. Maybe. Maybe. Pretty sure. <laughs> well, I'm going to call Thank it you. that. And then if it's wrong, I'm just going to change it later. So I like this. Uh, it's Odontella, right? Uh, yeah. Of course, Odontella probably changed, right? So. Cursus or Cursus? Oh, Curses. I don't know. Let's see. Seth's spelling. <laughs> well, I'll call it Cursus. Again, if it's wrong, we'll just change it later. No one will know. Don't tell. Well, I won't tell. Uh, let's see. So, if it's your first time here, um, you'll probably notice that occasionally the image quality changes, and that's because I'm changing the speed settings on the scanning electron microscope. So, um, sometimes it's scanning very quickly, and sometimes it's scanning very slowly. And... Hmm. Micah wants to know what are the umbilical looking things between the diatoms. Oh, so I um, think I think he means the the odontella that we just looked at, maybe. Oh, or or even maybe the thalassocyra. Um, Possibly. So, for this one, this sort of these sort of lines that you're seeing are actually uh, the same as this. Right, so the, there's sort of a spine that's coming out. I don't think they're actually spines, but because um, they look hollow to me, but they're they're coming out of the valve face on this one, and then there's another cell right here. So they're coming out of the valve face on this one, and then there's another cell over here. So they're also coming out of the cell on this one, and then they're just sort of you know making a little V as they overlap with each other, and then there's two more out here. But in the, um, if you're thinking about the Thalassocyra that we saw that had sort of like a connecting piece between them, those ones, are, it's a piece of chitin that's coming out of um, the central photoportula. And I can give you a really nice view of one of those here because this is um, Thalassocyra, I think it's Weiss flogii. And um, mm. it's got a series of these little tubes up here and then it uses these little tubes that will squeeze some goo out of it, and then it connects to its sibling cells that way. So all of these little tubes are processes that are used to um, connect them together in those little colonies. And that's the inside, though. This is an inside view, yeah. And um, when you get to the... So this is also very lightly solidified, so that's why it looks like it's collapsed on itself, because it has. Um, but one thing that's nice about that is actually lets us look at these um, a little bit more closely. So these are the mantophotoportula. Manto I went a little overcompensated there. These are the mantophotoportula um, on the sides of the um, Thalassocyra. And for many species of um, sort of round diatoms, they usually squeeze some goo out of these as well. And they use them to create sort of like a parachute-like structure um, or little threads that sort of stick outward from the valve to baffle their descent so they don't fall through the water quite as quickly. And uh, I believe this down here is at the Lassiocera uh, Pacifica, which is here in the subset. And then this thing over here that you're seeing that looks like a long colony is Catoceros.
Oh, and there is that the one that has the funny little. That's not the clock one next to it, is it? That we saw last night on your this stream? One? This is just Bless uh, Isaira. Got it. I don't know what that little clock one was. That, if that's in the sample, I'm going to probably spend a little bit of time looking at it. I don't know that I'll be able to tell what it is because there's always so many little round ones in these samples that um, it's sometimes hard for me to like pick one out. Um, in the light microscope, it's a little bit easier to kind of just zoom in on something that looks weird. Um, you know, in the SEM, everything is, everything looks kind of weird in a way. Um, so it's, it's hard to pick out what you're looking at. But you can see, here's another one of these. Oops, it overcompensated again, just a little bit. Um, here's another one of these, the last Cyrus. Here's the, um, the shredded processes on the mantle, and here's the shredded process in the valve center that it uses to connect you know, in the sort of threaded colonies to other Thalassiosyra. So this is their, you know, their way of staying in touch with their relatives, their cloned relatives. Clones gotta stick together. I mean, if you can't look out for yourself, who's going to, I suppose? Yeah, and this is another one of those, I don't know what you're calling it, debilis or something. Uh, you can see the whole coil is here, and it's actually like yeah. um, going around yep. a couple of times. Yeah, debilis, D-E-B-I-L-I-S. I spelled that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice. It looks like Yay. a little centipede, right? It's got like a, kind of a coil to it. Um, and then these are, this, this is skeletonema which are really common in these samples. Yeah. Uh, here's another big catastrophe of some type. Yeah, and there's been a lot of different catastrophes. I mean, normally we'd see a couple here and there, but it's the spring bloom right now. So we're getting kind of like diatom salad. I would need it. <laughs> it's a visual salad. Uh, on, I guess maybe it was Thursday, I went to a local store and I ordered a salad and I, they asked me if ranch was okay and I said, do you have Italian? And they said yes. And then when I got back to my office, it was Thousand Island, so. Oh no! I ate my salad without any dressing that day. It wasn't a diet salad. salad. It wasn't. No, no, it was just a regular salad. That one's really chunky. And unusual looking. I think maybe it's just a melosyra, but I don't know what this is up here. This kind of weird bump. Huh. I might probably need to see this one clean in order to tell what it is. Yeah. So these are um, the unprocessed version. Also, I was kind of hoping if I poke around in here, I will find a dinoflagellate or something else that might be kind of interesting to see. Yeah. There's a giant ketoceros right there. Monster one. Ooh. Oh, and there's something it's up here. The you can really get a sense of the jagged spines that they have. They look like um, a barbed fence wire, barbed fence posts, right? Like the kind that yeah, you... it screams, don't eat me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's probably what I would scream if I were plankton too, to be honest. But you can see it's got these really long spines. This is an end one. The end ones have like long spines that point like up or down and then a little bump in the middle yep didymus probably it has a little nubbin and i thought i saw something cool over here so i'm zooming out until i see it oh uh, yeah here they are i'm 
not sure what's going on here either. Oh, it's a triangle-shaped one. It's a colony. Oh, it's on its side. Yeah. This is a triangle-shaped diatom. <gasps> there's two of them, right? So that's a cell. And there's another one. And I presume they had something connecting them or they wouldn't be sitting quite like they are. Like, perfectly aligned. Do you know what it is? Um, yeah. Triceradium? No. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> it's got, it's got tri in the, in the name. No. Yeah, it, I don't know. They're always too small for me to see, so I can't. Well, this one's not too small. Not anymore. It's a little dirty. Yeah, I don't know what that is, uh, but you can definitely see that it's, um, was in a colony. Oops, I went a little too far again. Yeah, they were linked SM's together. SM's being kind of crazy. Yeah, that they were somehow linked together when they were living. We can actually take a nice picture of them and then we can try to see if you can figure out what they are. They're in girdle view, but... Um, yeah, but I think it's the same one we saw before in Belface, remember? A long time ago. There's a picture of one. Yeah. I think. I think. Well, now there's two pictures. And if we find another one in Val view, we'll have three pictures. Woo! Ooh, and there's some chat going on here. Oh, hello, Kerr. How are you doing? And let's see, I should zoom up. I missed stuff. Um, Techrific, would it be considered a metamorph? I don't know what a metamorph is. Um, a Schrodinger's diet <laughs> Um... Throw blue cheese dressing on there and we'll talk. Oh, yeah. Because of your salad. Right. They're fighting over who's the worst speller. I guess maybe someone needs to get rid of this person. It's just in here spamming stuff like an idiot. Oops. Yeah. Sorry, I was watching on Discord. There's always someone who thinks they're being cool. Trying to get a rise out of everybody. to switch to mod view. <laughs> well, we have like a half dozen mods in chat. One of them could handle it. True. I can just watch the SEM view and ignore them, so... <laughs> wow, they're beautiful. So I don't know, are those pore fields on the corners? Like, is that how they connect? Because... It's not clear to me. It doesn't look like they have any yeah. sort of pore fields. Um, but I would have to see it with the valve face to tell for sure. Um, it could be that there was a girdle band wrapped around them, you know, and the girdle band somehow fell apart. Yeah. I'm just going to call it Triceradium for now. Thank you, Micah. Did he deal with the child? He did.
there's a um, pretty neat view of this thing. Oh, it keeps doing this thing where I click and then I zoom in and it started zooming in before and it thinks I clicked. Yeah, they can see this sort of ring of spines that are up here, like well above the um, surface. Yes. It's a pretty neat looking view. And then if it wasn't covered with the junk, I probably would take a picture of that one. Yeah. Uh, so I think I've been seeing that one in the light microscope because it has just, they stick up just far enough that there's like a hint of that crown if I get it at the right angle mm -hmm. on the light microscope. Yeah. There's another one of these. Maybe they're common enough that we could actually get some. Yeah. And then there's these things, which are the little are like things that are always clustered together in a little clump. Are those the clumpy ones that are covered in goo? Cause yes. I'm pretty sure, based on the size, uh -huh. it's only maybe 20 microns across. And then also, when I was looking at it in mine on the mounted samples, the surfaces look pretty much like this. So Ooh. we'll take a look at some processed um, versions of maybe these will be, because they were pretty common in the samples as well. So maybe yeah, we'll find yeah. some that aren't covered with goo and can actually see something. And then this coil up here is, I think you can't be it, right? Yeah, it sure does look like it. They're so lightly silicified. A little bit too far off. Yeah. I keep trying to tell it I want it to be in the middle of the screen. <laughs> and then when I zoom in, it goes somewhere else. <laughs> oh, I think maybe it's okay here. I just zoomed in a little too far. So this ring around the outside is Eucampia. Here's another little cluster of these Thalassisara clumps. Yeah. And we saw some Eucampia before. And I got some nice pictures of the... Um, they have these apical slot fields as opposed to pore fields, right? So. I think this... The, oh yeah, look at that. Like little stars where they hold on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like flitting through my book here going, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want me to wait? No, 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 you don't need to wait. I can always go back with the VOD and... and <laughs> <laughs> Try to figure out which one it is. Well, I'm pretty sure which one it is. I'm just trying... So... I have, um, I'm, as I learn the names, it helps me when I look something up to remember it. And so each time if I don't remember it, I try and remember first to recall it. Mm -hmm. And then if I can't recall it, I look it up to kind of re-solidify my knowledge. I know it's Eucampia. I got the genus. Yeah. <laughs> me too. What's this one? Oh, that one, that beautiful one from the other night. <laughs> it's not the croissant. Epithemia. Epithemia is right. You're, uh, one of these days you're just gonna have to give it up and become a diatom taxonomist, I think. I don't know. I mean, it'd be neat. It'd be so neat. We'll see after the pandemic, right? There's gotta be a a local course in marine diatom taxonomy <laughs> well, for the lay person. <laughs> I think you're beyond the lay person at this point is what I'm saying. Yeah, but so many, so many of the classes at the universities, there's all of these prerequisites to even be able to get into the programs. Hmm. But you know, who knows? I would maybe, I'll look into it more. Maybe talk to Beth, um, Cassie and see what she says. Because she's over there now, right? Yes! I haven't talked to her in a while. Yes, they are small, bluesy. These guys are very small. Oh. 
positively skeletal. Oh wait, somebody was talking about skeletal. So those long, those long ones are called skeletonema. Yeah, these ones. Isn't that great? Yeah. They're just so beautiful. There's such a great size range right now too. Oh, there's a uh, Thalassothrix, right? Or Thalassionema? Thalassionema, yeah. They're a little tinier. And then there's this thing. That's a Cerverella. Is it? Yeah. See the circumferal circumferential oh. raphe? Yeah, it was just tiny. Yeah, it's pretty small. It's got a lot of dirt on it. Yeah. Dirt, man. <laughs> well, that's why I process stuff. I try to get rid of all this gunk, living gunk. Uh, that's a detillum, a big fat one. It is, but not the different one. No. See, now I'm curious. You're like, wait, there's another detillum? There is. There's another? Oh. I'll find it eventually. Oh. And it's not just a mistake, right? Mm. Like the ones that like, they just, they've got a problem and they don't make those little. I don't think it's a circus right. freak. No. I think it's a real, it would be a weird mistake to make. Oh, look at that. This is Stephanopixis. It's a little capsule. I don't know, you were calling one of them Taurus, but this one I don't think is Taurus, or it's not the same as the other one that we saw, or it doesn't look like it to me. Yeah, so the Taurus one has the one that knuckles together. Yeah. And it's the other one. <laughs> the other one <laughs> it's the other one i don't know the names of them so yeah and i'm learning right. here let's see where is it where is it wrestle my papers <laughs> da, 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 da. there's a long chain of uh pseudonitia yeah, on the clean ones, if we find the pseudonitsia, I'd love to get a good picture of it because it's hard to explain how they, all those, those, the, the texture on it that looks like little stripes is hard to explain to people because you can never see it mm. on the light microscope when it's alive I can get and how picture. it moves because the rafi's on the, on the edge. Yeah. I can get a picture. Those are easy to find. Oh, in For a me. clean one. That'd be so cool. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, Micah says, I should be in charge of renaming these things. Cheese puff, wicker canoe, centipede boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that MSG wants to know, how do they reproduce? Uh, how do diatoms reproduce? They, um, they have two different reprodu reproduction um, strategies. Uh, they have an asexual cycle, which is most of the time. And so that's just mitosis, where the binary fission, where the cell basically a clone of itself. Um, uh, it starts to divide the nucleus and then so it pulls the nucleus in half and each side gets a nucleus basically. And then it puts a division between those. And then it builds a cell wall around the nucleus on the inside of the valve. And it does this by adding some girdle bands so that it can be a little bit sort of wider in the middle. And then it basically makes a whole cell, um, but back to back inside the valve. And then um, these two things pop apart. And then you have two diatoms where you used to have one. And that's how most of the cell division, most of the reproduction happens. Um, and then, and so most diatoms that you see are clones and then um, a byproduct of the fact that they form inside of the cell wall which is rigid is that 
um, they get a little smaller. So one of the valves is always just getting a little bit smaller um, when it reproduces. So one of them gets this sort of valve that was inside, you know, in here. Um, then in the next time when it splits, so they progressively get a little bit smaller. Um, and then when they're at their, you know, they get under a certain, certain size range, they will switch to sexual reproduction. So, um, and the sexual reproduction for the plankton is usually just some sort of an environmental cue causes them to split apart and um, half the population becomes male and half the population becomes female and um, they, the male parts basically sort of swim around and find the female parts and impregnate them. So, um, Male parts. Yeah, the gametes. The gametes. Yeah. They have flagellated gametes. It's just crazy. They do. It's the only time that diatoms actually have flagella. And it's only part of the population that, that has them. Part of the population for part of the life cycle. Right. Have flagella. Right. But so do we, right? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> do we? <laughs> I don't remember ever having a flagella. The sperm have oh. flagella. Well, yes. I'm just like... You know. Well, are they flagella in sperm? I don't know. I'm bad so. with like biology, so. Good news, everyone. Hey, we got a new follow. Woohoo! All right, I'm going to move us around to a different sample, one that's been processed. So this is from March 1st. And the sample that I'm going to move us to is, um, that's also March 1st, by the way. The one that I'm going to move us to is actually from February 15th or something like that. I don't remember the date off the top of my head, but it was middle of February, um, somewhere around there, or maybe closer to the end of February. Uh, I thought I saw Mallory chatting somewhere, so maybe she knows the date because she wrote them down. Um, but this one's actually been processed. So um, when we zoom in on stuff, it won't be covered with a bunch of goo anymore. And uh, one of the things I want you to see, um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. <laughs> because uh, I'm some a little farther. Okay. Wow. Because this right here is a diatom this thing and that is one diatom it's huge and this scale bar at the bottom that's Good 500 news, microns everyone. so all the diatoms we've been looking at in the SEM are really really small compared to that uh, and I'm going to pull out my little measuring tool which we can put on here and that thing is uh, two millimeters almost, 1.8 millimeters. <laughs> wow. So, that's huge. I mean, for a diatom, that's monstrous. You could pick that up with tweezers. I mean, that's, that's like a splinter you get in your hand. Uh, yeah, but it's really thin. It's thin, uh, but you'd be able to, like with tweezers, you could pick that up. I mean, like a, that's... I've picked up smaller things with tweezers than that, so, um, but that's monstrous, and that's all one diatom. Isn't that cool? That's amazing. I, I saw one of these last night when we were, um, I was streaming from home looking at these samples in the light microscope, and I was like, what is this? <laughs> Why does it not end? Uh, it is just enormous. And um, this one is oh. nice and clean. And Gotta an, see the ends. On an SEM, we can actually zoom in. And the thing behind it, I think, is uh, the last Cicero. You can see this ridiculously detailed uh, spines. Those are, I think those are actually the, they look hollow to me, so they're probably the um, Mantophotoportula. But uh, this is our super long one that we were looking at right here. And it ha does have little tiny... Uh, pores that run along the length of it, one on each side, and they're really right on the mantle 
face junction, so where the diatom starts to curve, we call the mantle, um, this part on the valve. And this is an internal view right here. So um, this is a super cool Thalassia behind it though. It is. I want to see the ends of that crazy long one. Okay. I'll, I'm going to see if well, I can at least just find yeah. an end Can you first. find it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> huge it's unreasonable <laughs> I think that's the end it's whole which it, is really cool it didn't break yeah no it, Pangolin says it's the monorail diatom that it, other diatoms take to work <laughs> um, it does have a, a pretty cool ends actually that is a rim of right there and these spines are somehow associated with the, uh, the pointing off the end of the diatom. Uh. So there's some cool stuff going on. It seems pretty simple when we were looking at the middle part, right? But then it's got this flangey spine oh. structure out here. And um, and that's a Rima portula. So it Ooh. belongs with the Fragilarias. Uh, it does. It has to. I know that it because to. it is, uh, it doesn't yeah. have a raphe, it is bilaterally symmetric, and it has a rim of portula. So uh, that automatically puts it with the araphid pennates. And, um, and I don't know anything else beyond that point. You've, your guess is as good as mine or better, probably. Definitely not better. <laughs> so you narrowed it down? To Arifid pennates, so that I can start looking it up. Yes, it's in the. It's in the. Um, I mean, how many can be that big, really? Like, very there's few. got to be like, oh yeah, no, it's over this size. It has to be. Yeah, there's nothing. Um, I've never seen a diatom this big, like not on the SEM and that one that I saw, I saw on the light microscope. I've never seen a diatom this size. <laughs> this is just the biggest diatom I've ever seen. Two, could help two millimeters. Uh, 1.8, but we'll round it up to two. That's just a crazy size for a diatom. And I'm going to take a picture of it because the end is very interesting. It is. And also then I can kind of read some of the chat because I don't get to see the chat very much. Uh, let's see. Okay, so uh, Kaur says that uh, they're writing to tell us that having us both on the stream in Discord is great, that the sound is awesome, and that listening to our dialogue is interesting, and that's a huge plus. Um, Yay! What was the honeycomb structure previously? So that was like way back before. Um, the honeycomb structure that we were looking at is the outside of, um, that was a, um, a Stephanopixis diatom. And then yeah, maybe Nipponica. I think I, I I think that's the other one with the non neckled connections. Oh, that's not this one, right? No, 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 no. Yeah, okay. The Stephanopixis, you know, the the other Stephanopixis. Yeah. Okay. So blue was asking uh, one micron is, and then they gave some very large number, uh, one millionth of a meter, and yes, that's what it is. So one thousand um, millimeters make up a meter. And then 1,000 um, microns make up a millimeter. So, um, let's see. Ooh. Okay, so it's, I'm still coming back to Thalassiothrix. Oh, well, that's totally possible. Um, so yeah, this structure that you see that looks like a, um, a mouth, those, that's the rim of portula. And for Fragilaria, uh, things that belong in the class Fragilaria Fisi or whatever, um, they will have typically just one rim of portula on one end. So we pick the right end. And then, uh, oh, some sort of peach ops. Thank you for uh, subscribe, resubscribing Peach Hops and welcome yeah. in. 
and thank you Peaches. while I'm here I can I can give out my own shout outs because I'm paying attention okay um, you should definitely check out Peach Hops he's got some really cool streams that he does uh, his own sort of cool music and, uh, and crazy psychedelic um, sort of media in the background uh, All right. What should I put on the name for it? Long Boy? <laughs> Long Boy. The Lassio Thorax. I don't know. Long Boy works. I mean, there can't be that many of them. That's the Thrix, maybe. Okay. Maybe. That one is super long. It is. It is. We could go long. visit the other end of it, maybe. Ooh. Let me zoom out. <laughs> All right, internally valve end with serrated protrusions and labiate process. It looks like it probably is longissima. Maybe. <laughs> See what the other end looks like. Oh, it has a, yeah. it has a, uh, the same on the other end. It has a, um, a room of portal on both ends. Ooh. And also a, a crazy little funny crown-shaped doodad. Yeah, the crown-shaped doodad. It does. It does look like longissima. Oh, so cool! It looks like a chicken. P Chop says. Uh, if only it were a purple chicken. <laughs> it's a chicken-headed diatom. <laughs> It's definitely um, belongs in a circus. That is crazy. I want to see what the spines look like on the other side, but I don't know that there's another one in the sample. Um, oh, on the outside? I do want to get a picture of it. And I'm going <laughs> to rotate this a little. Because <laughs> it's so Oh, big. I went the wrong way. Hang on. Oh no, I went the right way. I had it. Uh, nuts. Oh no. Uh, what was it? 240. No. It was that 240. I want 220. All right. Terrific asks so, are they in actually clones, not just separated? Or do they always have two mouths? I'm oh, not sure. it's, it's not a mouth. Uh, it's a labiate process, so it's just a hole going through the diatom's um, skeleton cell wall. It's mouth-shaped, but it's not a mouth. It's not a mouth. Uh, they don't eat, uh, at least not the way that you think of eating, <laughs> with a mouth. Uh, they just absorb nutrients through their pores, for the most part. Okay. That's the in full size field of view version. Wow. <laughs> and I want to get it in focus, so I need to zoom in first on something. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough. Wow. And now we can go back out to basically the limits of my, as far away as I can get on the SEM, which is right there. That's the entire field of view I can make which is two millimeters when I'm zoomed in at where we are. Uh, and we are, will be a little bit closer than that. Wow. That's going to be a crazy. OK, I'm just going to take that picture. It seems like <laughs> uh, I'm taking a picture of about, you know, 400 diatoms at once. But um, I was just trying to get that one. So these things right here, by the way, uh, there's one here. And here where? Oh, uh, can you see my cursor? Oh yes. Um, on the up at the top on the photo. Uh, yes. This thing, and then there's another one. I think it's still in the field of view, but I think that is Plagiotrophus. Oh. I think that fin that you're seeing is either Plagiotrophus or Entomenes. But based on the size, I think that's Plagiotrophus. 
So Plagiotropus is the one that I thought was Tropodeneus. I mean, you might have the right name. I don't know. I don't know either, because I'm using old books. Oh. So, right? Like, names change, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. I mean, except for species names, they usually don't. Usually don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's as technical as I can say it. They usually don't. Uh, yeah, there's something else. Let me get rid of this. I, I don't think you guys can see it, but there's junk on my screen. There's something else down here, which may be the... Um, the Scoliopleura? No, I think it's actually just this thing. Uh, oh. But we're looking at the inside of it, and this is the outside of it. It's on its side here, actually. And this one, I think, is the inside view of that thing. Ooh. Based on size and yeah. shape. And then, Sounds reasonable. This is a really interesting looking thing. And then this Thalassocyra that the uh, giant diatom landed on also <laughs> looks kind of cool to me. <laughs> Just a bunch of stuff. I think maybe that's a Melosyra. But looking at stuff from like way out here is kind of weird. Um, yeah. Because we're so used to, well, on the SCM, we're so used to being a lot closer. <laughs> <laughs> But in order to get this one, I had to zoom out basically as far as I could. I didn't have to lower the stage, so there's that. <laughs> um, but we are crazy zoomed out for this one. Ooh, Jack, Jack F93 just arrived and wants to know what are those many circles? Those are diatoms. Uh, we're looking at um, plankton from San Francisco Bay and the little round things um, that have solid material inside of them are diatoms and the ones that are just little rings without anything in them like um, this one over here is actually a girdle band for one of the round things so there's just a piece of it that fell off and terrific no terrific sorry um once let's see they say so if the pores are doing the nutrient uptake what purpose do those openings at each end serve propulsion jet engine exhausts um, I don't think so. Uh, the, there's, I think there's still quite a bit of conversation about what purpose the Rimaportula serves, but um, one purpose that has been cited is that they think, oh, it's just a cosinodiscus. Um, they think that um, they're used to help with cell division, so they're like sometimes used as anchor points to try to get the um, the nucleus into the center of the valve so that you can start to pull it apart when it, and they go to divide. Um, so that's one sort of explanation that I've heard for what they're used for. And oh, wow. um, of course, uh, when you're nearly two millimeters long, trying to get the nucleus into the center is probably pretty important. <laughs> going to see anything cool. It's like a solid sheet of stuff. Wow. Uh, maybe up here. Oh, wait, on the, you can see a bit of the side and the outside of it. Hmm. Helps if I have it in focus too. So I think that's um, just the, the mantle. It's so smooth. I know. It's, it's got holes. Um, oh, it does. It's a diatom, so that just comes holes. with comes with the territory. <laughs> but um, maybe not apparent unless you zoom in a bit. Um, and th I think they're in rows. Um, it's not totally clear to me from this view. <laughs> uh, what's going on. And then there's, of course, a pile of junk in the middle of it. So, uh, but Shucks. I don't think that would help us any. I was looking for a Rafi, which I don't see. So um, it must be this thing on the outside edge is a Rafi, maybe. Um, oh. But it's face down, so I can't see it. Uh, and then I thought maybe if I went up to this one, we could look at it. It's yeah. been torn. 
Yeah, it broke, but this should be the Rafi here, and it is. Oh! Um, that's just on the edge, right? But they're, yeah. they're shaped sort of like the Rafi is at the top, and then the rest of the diatom is curled like away from the Rafi. So um, this is sort of a pretty unique shape for a diatom. And let me get it into focus for you. But that is definitely the Rafi. There's no question. Wow. To me, there's no question for that. And the only thing I don't know is if this is the same thing we were just looking at, because these holes on the valve face are slot shaped. And I don't, oh, think, wow. I don't think you're going to go from like slot shaped holes to circles on the inside, but it's possible, I suppose. Um, but this one is definitely Plagiotrophus. That's the shape of the Rafi and also the shape of this, the valve face. And um, if it were in Tamanese, which is really closely related to Plagiotrophus, it would be like humped, like this thing would be much more depressed in the middle. And I think we saw a bunch of entomines in the light microscope, so they hopefully they're here. Yeah, we did. Well, I don't they know were cruising all. around. There was a few, right? I don't know, lots probably, but they're smaller. They're usually a lot smaller than that. That's a big diatom. So, sorry, I need to fix the uh, speed settings a little bit, or maybe I could just turn up the beam intensity. There's just so much to see. Yeah, it's almost endless um, in these samples. It's really hard to um, to pick something and kind of focus in on it because of the variety of things that are in the plankton, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of it's just round stuff, but even when you go looking at the round stuff, <laughs> they're not all the same. Um, many of these are less and many of them are actually the same species but if you were to go look at this one for example that's um, Actinopticus a nice clean one so for a little yeah. bit of junk up there um, and we can actually look at the labiate process for this one so pretty clean right at the um, oh it's beautiful at the labiate it's process so nice yeah, Peachops, it's a radiation symbol. Acnopticus yep. does that. There's one uh, emote that we use that is this this diatom. And, but you can see this is a different diatom here. Uh, it doesn't have the, the lumps. But that one and that one are the same. And I, I'm not sure if this is an internal view or an external view. Oh, this is an internal view. So it could be the same as this one, just inside and outside together. It's a possibility. And this is also the last Syrah. You can see the Rimiporchula stem, the piece coming up off of it. Like a little newt. A little, yeah. doot. A little tiny foil, air foil. This looks like a piece of mica. like a muscovite or something. Oh, well, we have, um, it's the fool's gold on the beach. Oh, pyrite? Yeah. But this is actually like a, some sort of mica or biotite. Um, Ooh. Not that kind of mica mica. <laughs> oh, look, it's what you wanted. This one's broken. We'll find another one. Yeah. be neat to see because the way they the way they move themselves along in these long rows they have their overlapping ends but they still they slide yeah it's a uh, confusing to me even when I look at them how they're sliding but um, I mean I know they're using their rafi oh look it's our giant 
and cut a piece of it again. That's our, our landmark. We can divide up the slide by... Above and below. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the half of it that is under there and the half that isn't. Yeah, this one looks like it would be a good candidate. Let's see. It uh, does. Which way do I want to turn it? Student, it's yeah. I guessed correctly. So every time I do it, I forget which way is which, which way is clockwise. Oh wow! So it has like two openings for each of those stripes. Um. It does. Oh, wow. It's by Siriot. That's what we would call that. And I'm zoomed in way too close to be using um, uh, beam intensity 10. So I changed it back to 7. And I think that's going to be an OK image. You'll be able to see all the detail. Nice. Thank you. So the Rafi goes along the raised edge that's at the upper side. Yep, it's on this one right here. You can actually see the channel the Rafi sits in right there. Like in a fact, keel. we can see it right here, looking through this little window. Oh, it's tiny. Oh my gosh. That's the Rafi right there. And it's just running inside that little window. This is the fibula, yeah. And then... Um, so you can see the Rafi through there. Okay, language lesson. Fibula is the name of the opening. Yeah. And the, is the the hard ridge up above it a keel? Yes. And then the Rafi is that tiny little slit that runs underneath the keel inside and through those little openings. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All those things are true. Hooray! Okay, I think it's looking all right. Let's see. Yeah. Maybe I'll check the brightness and contrast. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. That's what I'm here for. Just take pictures of whatever you tell me to. Ask, ask. I say please, don't I? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate this. This is amazing. I think it looks good. Yes, it does. Okay. Perfect. Wow. Or it will be. achievement unlocked. <laughs> oh, wow. Because that was one of the things. We always skip over the Nitzia or the pseudo Nitzia. Yeah. And it's nice to have one picture of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is nice because it's not in the colony, which um, I could have taken, I suppose I should have taken one where we actually had the colony um, but you can kind of see that colony in the light microscope pretty well, so. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's a nice internal view, um, so you can actually see the raphe pretty easily and, the, um, you know, inside the fibula, so. What was the leaning of Tower Pisa diatom? Did we get a name for that one? Oh. Now I'm trying to remember back which one that was. Yeah, I don't know. Um, we'll probably see it again. Yeah, probably. The problem is, like, while I'm running the SEM, I can't really see what you're saying So, um, in the chat, so I have to take a picture to kind of catch it. The little guy beside the mica. Hmm. 
it's interesting. It's not like TiVo. I can't just rewind the image and go look. <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, you could always take a screenshot of it um, for people in the chat if there's something that you want us to identify uh, or me. And then uh, you could post it into the Discord or something. And I probably could tell you. Um, for anyone that's interested, there's a little command for my Discord here. Ha. Oh, I see how it is. <laughs> I see how things are going now. Um, I just wasn't fast enough. Yeah. Well, you were. I just didn't notice that oh, you I typed was. it. You beat me. It's so cool. So these are the ones, well, so it's a, a type of pseudonitia that produces domoic acid. Not necessarily this individual species of pseudonitia. So I get to look up how do you identify the differences? I don't know. Um, I don't know that there's more than one species of pseudonitia, is there? Oh yeah, there's like I think we get like I want to say there's like three or four different pseudonitia we get. Oh, okay. And there's of those there's like a there are two main size classes and only one of them is the toxigenic, the ones that make the toxin. Mhm. Mm and then of that group, they only do it sometimes. Well, this is interesting. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Isn't that fun? It's, it's <laughs> got a, it's got a, a um, bell face flower portula i can't remember the portula. and then yeah and, and then it's got portula. the little lips i know on the valve face it, it's covering all its bases i mean this isn't where the valve this isn't where the rima portula <laughs> is normally and this makes me want to call it like the lassiosira because ring of photoportula usually means the lassiosira but for the lassiosira the rima portula is always on like the margin it's not in the middle of the valve face like this so I don't know, maybe this is the uh, the weird little um, clock guy that we saw. And the oh. reason that I think that is because um, that that could be possible is because um, you remember it had, like, you could see sort of slot-like things coming down into the actual valve. And these internal um, strutted processes are super weird. They're like extending super far in. So um, let me see and if I can fix some of this. Uh, we need to do that. And then it's a little brightened, a little over brightened. So in a light microscope, you would be able to see those like extensions of the, um, the Manta photoportula coming into the actual valve because they're so long they would actually leave like a shadow or a bright spot or whatever. Huh. I've never right. seen this in any of your other samples that you've sent me either. So that's another thing that kind of like leads me to think it's something different. Um, I've never seen anything like this in your samples. Well, you know, maybe it just made a mistake on where it stuck that one. Where it put the room of Portula? Yeah. But you'll I remember- was having a bad day. You'll remember that for um, the Lassiosira on the outside, the rim of Portula is associated with like a big long tube. Yeah. And this one's lying flat, which means there's no tube associated with the rim of Portula. So if it just put it in the wrong place, it should be sitting at a crazy angle. Um, but this one's lying flat, which means it has no tube associated with the rim of Portula at all. Oh, uh, that's just weird. Yeah. So it's not a Thalassocyra, at least as far as normal Thalassocyra would be considered. Um, but I don't know what it is. So We should ask Anna. This is an Anna question, or maybe um, 
my friend Andy, somebody who's, you know, who's used to looking at these things. But this is going to be a, a nice... Uh, they'll know right away, probably, if it's, uh, if it's a, one of the freaky genera that have been separated because of these features, right? They would, they would just know it, probably. Okay, I'm going to take a picture because I don't know what it is. Always good yeah. when I don't know what it is to take a picture. Yeah. Oh, Techrific says they have to leave. It's been fascinating, and thanks. They yeah. say have a nice dream. Yeah, and um, Jan says, uh, can you tilt the sample to see more of the 3D structure? I can. Um, and if I were taking pictures to try to characterize it for... Um, for identifying it or something, I would do that. Um, the problem is that it's, I wouldn't be able to tilt it very far because you can see uh, down below me, there's the um, inside of the chamber. And um, I have all seven stubs mounted um, on a carousel. And if I tilt it, um, the SEM knows what's underneath the actual sensor, but it doesn't know what else is on the stage. So um, when I tilt it, I have to worry about the, um, the other samples bumping the sensor or the, um, the, the pull piece, which is the sort of cone-shaped thing coming down. And so what if I were going to tilt it like a lot, like if I wanted to tilt it and look at it at a low angle, um, like 40 degrees or something, normally what I would do is take the sample back out of the chamber and I would take all of the other stubs off and just have that one sample in the middle so that I could turn it without having to worry about it touching anything. Um, I could also lower the stage down and then tilt it and then bring the stage back up. But um, one of the problems is it limits how far I can, how close I can get, right? So, because the thing is tilted and it's not the top. So um, all of those things are totally feasible. They're just not practical for where things are set up right now. So this thing that's in the center um, is the valve face photoportula, and the photoportula have little um, side pores associated with a tube. So here's a side pore, here's a side pore, and here's a side pore. And these ones have just little cowlings, which are the coverings that kind of partially cover the tube, or the satellite pores. And then you can see these also have um, the the. Um, marginal or mantle photoportula are also associated with, I think in this case, just two satellite pores and the cowlings that cover over them. And then this really long tube that's coming out. It's always possible that there's a third satellite pore that's behind it, that's underneath it. Um, and if I were going to tilt it, that's one of the things I would go looking for is, is this two or is it three um, satellite pores associated with that um, strutted process on the outside edge. I'm going to call this one not Thalassiosyra. <laughs> <laughs> That's about all I could figure out um, so far. So just as an example, I was talking about how Thalassiosyra have a rimoportula associated with a big long tube, and here's an example. So these are strutted processes around the outside edge, and then these are rimoportula uh, extensions right here. So this thing's flat, and it's laying flat, which means that it doesn't have any of these. Um, it's not elevated up off of the surface, so it's not like it has four or five of them or anything like that. It doesn't have uh, a tube associated with it at all. So it's a weird, weird thing. Sometimes we find weird things. Uh, they're weird to me. Oh, not. hey, you know what it might be? What? Hold on. Hold on. It might be the Lastiosyra bioculata, possibly, because it says um, a single strutted process precisely in the valve center, a labiate process a little off-centered, um, and long internal parts of marginal strutted processes is readily seen at a certain focus. Well... That is what it sounds like. Except for it shouldn't be it at the last Isaira. So I know. 
It's been oh, it's an old in... book. Oh, right. Uh, that's probably the issue. Probably what we used to characterize the last SR has changed a little bit over time, but I'm going to guess that if it were modern, modern name, it probably would not be. At least the from dragon. what I was told the last SR is defined by. Well, who told you? We'll have to talk to them now. <laughs> uh, Anna. Anna, okay. Anna helps. I'm writing that one down. That's really cool. Maybe. And this diatom is um, bacteria astro. Look at that. Oh. It's like the crystalline entity. It looks like okay, a little um, brain cell. Yeah. Right? The, uh, the, whatever those are called. Synapse. Yeah. Ganglia? No, let's see. Okay. Chicken Benru Benaru says, why do they develop these tubes? Yeah. So this one, Bacteria Astrum, um, they, they are actually tubes and you can see them. Um, I was going to take a picture, but I actually need to zoom in to talk about it. Um, you can see that they're tubes right here. So I'm going to slow it down a little. Um, you can see that there's a tube, which means that it's not a spine. And what they do normally when you have these things, which are called setae, not spines, um, they put their chloroplasts out in them and because they're plankton. And as they fall through the water column, um, they have more surface area. And the reason they need to do that um, would be a little more apparent if we had the, um, they grow in a colony. And if we had the colony, you'd be able to sort of see this, that the center cells are all together. And if you push all of your chloroplasts out to the outside edge, right, then you have surface area outside at the outside edge where you're not being interfered with the rest of the colony. So even though they're transparent, um, you know, if you, if you put all your chlor chloroplasts in the center, um, the light that's transmitted through them wouldn't get all the way through as easily. And so I think what they're doing is they use these as um, like cell extensions, like a way to get their chloroplasts out into the, the light away from the colony um, for food. So, and that's really interesting because I've only seen, I've only seen some of them like chucking their chloroplasts out into their setae. A lot of them I just see are clear. Like, yeah. I don't know if, if that's like a species thing, like that some of them do it and some of them don't. It's just a, I don't know enough about the chloroplast and the way they move inside the cell structure. Yeah, I don't either. Um, I mean, I don't look at the soft parts. I look at the hard parts, and I don't look at marine diatoms either. So, like, when you ask me questions about, like, <laughs> marine soft parts, you're in, like, my <laughs> double zone of weakness. I can't answer those questions very well. Um, but I was telling... Uh, Mallory was asking me about this the other day, about, like, um, why do I keep looking at marine diatoms uh, if I don't study marine diatoms? And I was like, well, you know, I just have a interest in diatoms. I don't really, I mean, we don't look at marine diatoms. We don't analyze marine diatoms in my lab, but um, I, that doesn't mean I should remain ignorant, I guess, is the way that I, I view that. Um, I just don't want people to know that I know marine diatoms because uh, then they'll start asking me to analyze marine diatom samples too, so. So here's the thing, right? Like for me, because I'm looking at stuff in an estuary. So it's actually, it's really interesting because it's a mix of freshwater and marine stuff that ends up in the samples. So there, there are these places where, you know, where there's this mixing. And, and I think that that's, it's really neat to have an idea. I mean, if you were looking at, I don't know, a lake that would sometimes get like salt water Yes. flushed into it, right? Yes, and sometimes I do look at lakes that get salt water flushed into them, so there is a value to knowing this stuff. Um, also, I could then 
recognize a marine diatom when I see one, right? I mean, I know, um, I usually know it's a marine diatom when I see one because I don't know what it is. It's like, <laughs> uh, I don't know what this genus is. And usually if I don't know what it is to the genus level, it doesn't belong in fresh water because uh, I've looked at a lot of different material from fresh water and usually I can get stuff into the genus. Um, sometimes when it's in the SEM and I'm looking at it, uh, I can't figure out what genus it is, but that's because it looks so different in the SEM than it does in the light microscope that I might see something like Pseudostar Syra or it just doesn't look the way I'm used to seeing it and then I don't know what it is and it takes me a while for my brain to sort of recalibrate to what does that look like in the SEM. Um, but more typically it's just like, it's like this thing, like I've never seen anything like this in the freshwater and you know, neither has anybody who studies fresh water because they don't occur there um, but I don't I mean I look at terrestrial systems not just freshwater systems and um, sometimes they actually have salt water so. sometimes they mix yeah sometimes they do but um, so you know earlier when we were looking at that weird stack with those funny little connecting bits so I was just looking more carefully here at the the joining spines between these these bacteriastrum. Uh huh. You think maybe it could have been bacteriastrum that just had its um, other bits broken off? Uh, They're really strange. I don't want to say no, but I don't think so. No. Oh. Hmm. This one's got crazy tubes coming out of it. Tubes for days. Yeah. Okay, let's see. There's a question here. What makes, from Yan, what makes a marine diatom not survive in fresh water and vice versa? Um, well, this is actually sort of... Uh, not necessarily just for diatoms, it's for any organisms. Um, osmoregulation, which is the ability to withstand salt water, is actually one of the most challenging things for any organism. Um, for example, if you took a fish out of your freshwater system and put it into a saltwater system, that kills them pretty much instantly. And the same thing would happen for most fish if you take it out of the saltwater and put it into freshwater systems. Um, and that's because their cells are built to sort of regulate um, salts one way or another. There's sort of three or four different strategies that organisms use, but the primary way that most organisms deal with salt water, because it's so challenging for them, um, is that they either have something in the cell that squeezes the salt out and then constantly pushes salt out of their system. So like fish, for example, will just pee out salt constantly, right, if they're stuck in a, uh, an environment that has a lot of salt water, because the salt's not something that they want to have inside their system, um, or they do the opposite, and they just sort of embrace it, and they try to get the internal system to basically be a salt system, um, and somehow they adapt to the salt conditions that way. But, um, just in general, like for any organism, not just diatoms, um, that barricade is a real one, you know, one that's really challenging for organisms because if you're not adapted to salt water, um, you have to find a way to get it out of you, right? And, um, and, and partly because it creates a gradient. So um, the more salt you pump out of your system, it increases the salts in the surrounding environments and that means it wants to get back in even more, right? So um, the, the osmosis process is driven by that gradient. And so... Oh my goodness. Sorry, you're getting a raid by Volcano Doc. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's great. Um, uh, thanks for that, uh, Volcano Doc. Uh, it's a monster wall of uh, volcanoes in my chat. Um, and... Uh, Volcano Doc was actually interviewing, um, or I guess maybe they're just hanging out, but it was kind of like an interview um, with my friend Ann. So, hey Ann, hopefully you're still uh, in there. Uh, it was nice to see you in, in, for the first part of um, Volcano Doc's stream. And um, 
Yep, there she is. I know that name. Um, so we're looking at some plankton from San Francisco Bay. And um, I'm going to give a little shout out to Volcano Doc. You should definitely go check out her streams as well. Uh, a science streamer who streams about um, all things volcanoes and a, a fellow geologist. So, um, and I sometimes go in there and hang out for about as long as I can. Good so, news, everyone. Um, and yeah, she was interviewing my friend Anne, uh, who's also her friend Anne. So, uh, I, I actually found that out. I don't know. We were talking. To, uh, hey, Mallory Sally. <laughs> We're interviewing, uh, I think, uh, Rachel Lupian on uh, on my stream from uh, one of the papers that she published, and started chatting with um, Volcano Doc about people she knew at the University of Arizona. Um, and then I was like, oh, "Wait, I know Anne," and uh, so it's nice to see you're on Twitch now. Um, I guess welcome to the party. Woohoo! And uh, the disembodied voice you're hearing is uh, another streamer, Pacific Plankton, who um, streams live plankton from San Francisco Bay um, on her microscope um, on Monday nights and Thursday nights. And I think you told me you were going to start streaming on a different day as well, but I haven't seen it materialize yet. Yeah, I haven't chosen a time. It's, it's hard to choose another time when it's calm and quiet enough in my home to to stream. I don't have a lab. Well, um, I don't have a, I have a lab at, at school, but I don't have one at home. So sometimes it's noisy at my house too. But you have a door. <laughs> I have several doors. <laughs> uh, this cool diatom is Campylodiscus, and I'm very excited to see this Campylodiscus. Um, this one's kind of square looking in the SEM, but it's in fact um, shaped like a Pringle. So this one, um, it looks like it's out of focus up here and down here. And that's because those things uh, have topography that are coming at us. And, um, and so it's curled, right? Like a Pringle chip, it's saddle shaped. And um, this is a really cool diatom. So I'm going to zoom in like crazy. Um, so we can kind of check it out up close. And I feel like we could we could go exploring in one of these little tiny holes here. Ooh. Holes and holes. Yeah, that's the way diatoms are. It's a it's a in, inception like with holes inside the holes. At some point, the SCM runs out of the ability to see uh, into those holes. But I'm going to zoom out and get us a nice picture of this, and then I can see what's going on in chat, because I can't see what's going on in chat when I'm... So Alan JPA asks, um, let's see, what was the original question? Did these microbes evolve in zero G, outer space, or the microbes evolve on Earth? I said they're earthlings, but they're curious. They may have been found on Earth, but did they evolve from outer space? Um, well, they share a lot of DNA with other earthling microbes. So I would guess that they are earthlings um, based on that uh, alone. So most of our evidence would suggest that they are um, Organisms that evolved in the Jurassic or from the marine world and or around the Jurassic sometime uh, and and they're kind of cousins to things like um, Chrysophytes and other golden algae and so um, very likely they are earthlings um, There have been some sort of sketchy papers that have been published where people found some diatoms on a meteorite and they then jump to the conclusion that diatoms could travel through space and um, it's possible that they could actually survive space um, they are a form Good of news, everyone. Oh, a new follower they are a form of extremophile in the sense that they can handle being desiccated and some of them can handle high radiation and some of them can handle all kinds of things but um, uh, 
but it's unlikely that they would have been trans transported to the um, you know to Earth and then basically uh, look like a Nitzia that we also find on Earth, right? So, um, so those reports are usually quickly discounted by someone who's looked at a diatom before. Um, you know, usually you see a diatom from, if it came from outer space, it wouldn't look like one we had here, um, or you'd think it wouldn't, so. Right. Uh, the shapes would probably be a lot different if it was forming in zero G, too. Um, Are there more questions? Let's see. Let's see. Oh, we are I'm someone at it. else's house. You're ordering ketchup Pringles from Canada to try them. Um, you should try them on stream, Tropical. You should stream yourself eating ketchup flavored Pringles. People want to know what they taste like, and they're going to want to see your reaction to that. I suppose we could just ask a Canadian. Mm. This is Campylodiscus. Campylodiscus also happens to be my wife's name on Twitch. <laughs> Her handle. <laughs> Um, because it's one of her favorite types of diatoms, so maybe I'll bring this one home as a, a late birthday present for her. Ah. Uh, so, so the rafi that goes around the outside edge of that does mm -hmm. it have ends? Like, do the, is there a obvious spot where it like where they poke in or start, or does it just wrap around kind of smoothly? Um, it has a um, it has an end. And, oops. Don't uh, drink an SEM, folks. Um, <laughs> it does have an end. We might not be able to see it. Okay. Um, my guess is, um, it would be either where it's um, a depression or where it's high, but. Um, we're looking at the outside of the diatom, and so oh, the okay. rafi wouldn't be, I mean, we're, I mean, maybe this is the inside, actually, or the rafi would be on the other side. Um, mm. I, I mean, the hole, the slit would be on the other side. We could see it if we could look inside this little structure right here. So mm -hmm. um, we might be able to see it. I was just curious, because that was something that It was neat to see on the edge of the other one. Yeah. Um, but for the Sororellas and the Campylodiscus, the, they actually, oh, so it should be on either here or here. I can kind of see yeah. the, um, the way that this one's structured. But um, for the Sororella and Campylodiscus, um, if you're wondering, like, how do they do that, where the raphe normally would go down the middle of the valve, then for some reason they're on the ends of the valve, you kind of have to think of them like, I don't know if you if you know like how squids are, like their heads are elongated in a weird way that's like like stretched sideways or something. Um, but mm -hmm. if you took one of each one of the rafies that would normally be meeting in the center, they would have to be pushed all the way up to one margin and then instead wrap all the way around the outside. So they have a you know they have an end on each side that joins together and a, a start on each side that joins together. And you could theoretically, if you could see them. Um, figure out which one was the proximal rafi versus the um, the distal rafi. Although I don't know about the terminology, whether they actually called in that. Um, but you should be able to tell. All right, let's see. Um, how many large objects have, objects have hit the Earth again? Over 10,000? I am not a... I do not know about meteors and meteorites and large uh, objects hitting the earth so. I mean there's a lot of objects that have hit the earth I don't know um, that doesn't necessarily mean they were carrying diatoms 
Um, <laughs> I would assume they probably aren't. It's a sponge spicule. Ooh. A straight one. Yeah, and it skewered that diatom's um, girdle band. Yeah, it did look that way. Wow, you've almost been streaming for two hours. It's been an hour and 40 minutes. It doesn't feel like it, right? No, it doesn't. It's when a time vortex. In. Yeah, as soon as the SEM starts winding up, you're just like, wow, where did the time go? Uh, or at least I am. I don't know. Maybe my viewers are bored after 10 minutes. You never know. But I'm always just like, did, did we? Is it 3 o'clock already? It's almost. It's this so is, cool. Uh, Radiolarian, obviously. Yeah. And I call them little snowmen because they look like, you know, they've got like a hurricane lamp shape or something. Uh, and then spikes sticking out of them. The snowman with sticks. I suppose I could be equal opportunity and take a picture of it for you. Ooh. Jan wants to know, what's the oldest sample of diatoms ever recorded? Uh, I, you know, because I don't work in the marine realm uh, regularly, I don't know the answer to that question perfectly. Um, I know that they found some stuff. Good so news, part of the problem, Jan, is that some of the things that people think might be a diatom um, it's not clear whether it's actually a diatom. So, you know, it's sort of fuzzy. It's on the edge of what we would consider to be a diatom for sure. And um, so that's like early Jurassic, I think. Um, you know, uh, sort of time frame. And, but I think there's some stuff that's definitely late Jurassic that's unquestionably a diatom. So I usually just tell people Jurassic when they ask me that question, um, just to get roughly in the right neighborhood. But um, there's something called, uh, it's like Calyptosporium or something like that, which looks like it could be a diatom, but it looks like it's this, um, the insisted form of another organism. So, um, you know, like if you were going to give rise to diatoms, that might be an okay way to do it. Uh, it could be that diatoms are all actually formed from the cyst of another organism. Um, it would explain a lot. Um, but it's a structure that kind of looks like a diatom in that it has two parts and um, a sort of opercula or something that seals up the bottom part of the, of the organism. So, um, you know, it's, it's like a it's a question mark to us as to whether that's actually a diatom. And then they've, they've found some everyone. really old um, diatoms preserved in, you know, ancient sediments that are Jurassic, that are, you know, in terrestrial settings, but were originally marine. And the preservation quality of them is not very good. So that's the other issue. It's the farther you go back in time. You're talking about something that just requires a little bit of slightly basic conditions to dissolve. And so, like, the prospect of preserving it in a way that you could actually extract it later um, and keeping it from being dissolved or, or altered or something over, you know, 200 million years, is, it's asking a lot, so. And then P-Chops had a question, do people find diatoms in sediment cores? Yeah, all the time. Uh, that's what I study, actually. Um, you can find diatoms in any environment where there's water or um, or even a hint of water um, and sunlight because most of them almost all of them are um, are autotrophs so they they will be found in um, you know soils but it'd just be the ones living on the surface because once you get down into the soil there's no light so um, but tree bark, plants um, on the surface of plants, um, wet cave walls, rocks, uh, any, anywhere there's just a little bit of nutrients and, and light and some moisture, diatoms could live. And then their skeletons will be preserved in sediment records. So that's mostly what I study. I look at diatoms that were deposited in lake records 
um, or sometimes in riverine settings. That's beautiful. Look at that gorgeous radiolarian. That's not bad. They, um, they clean up okay. They do. Spikes on spikes for that snot creature. <laughs> it also doesn't want you to eat it, apparently. It's sending another message. It's okay. Eat. I won't eat it. Yeah. All right. What are we going to do? Another slide? Well, yeah, and you said that there was the um, the detellum that had different edges. I'm curious now. It's in here somewhere. I don't know where. <laughs> I don't even know which sample it was in. I was just like, that's weird, and then I moved on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's weird. Okay. It's all weird, right? It's all marine. It's all weird. Uh, you know, I was busy looking around, so um, it I didn't uh, it didn't strike me that I wouldn't find it again. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, it's well, I found it once, so... Yep. Uh, but that's not Tiny usually again. how the SEM works, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't remember where you found things? Like, it doesn't have, like, a favorites um, for each session where you can, like, like geotag things on the... In fact, it does, if you take a picture. Um, taking ah. a picture is a good way of telling it that's your favorite, and uh, it records X, Y, and Z, and it will um, drag you back to that same place. Um, oh, Leaning Tower of Pisa one. Maybe they were talking about a skeleton Ema. It does look a little bit like a Leaning Tower of Pisa. Let's, uh, we can zoom in. We haven't uh, ogled any skeleton Ema up close. Oh, they're so beautiful. And will be when I get it in focus anyway. This is a ridiculous looking diatom up close. We cut it right on the valve face, um, but the, the cell's broken on this side. And we can get kind of crazy close to looking at the spines on this one. There are a lot of skeletonema in these samples, so. Yes, yes. Uh, oh yeah, we're at beam intensity 10. It's like, why is this not focusing? Um, and I usually just forget what I'm doing. It's not focusing because me, I made a mistake. So here's a question. I mean, it's not from chat. It's just a, is that a human rib cage? No, that was the, is that a human rib cage? Was from chat. Sorry, I looked to, to the right. It is not a human rib cage. This is a diatom. It is... We are on the like two micron scale. It's super tiny. When when these these like knuckling bits that join together that they where they grow in silica, mm -hmm. do they start out close and join together and then grow the long extensions, or do the long extensions grow and then until they finally form the knuckles that that? Do you know what I mean? Like which part? Um, well, all of it which part grew first? inside of a diatom. Uh, you know, they grew like this, right? They didn't, they didn't yeah. find each other and, and then attach, but rather they grew inside the cell like this. Um, but like, how did they do it? I don't know the answer to that question. The way that the yeah. silica gets deposited or whatever mm -hmm. um, is totally a mystery to me, and it's probably different for each species and genus of diatom. Um, normally they build like the underlying uh, basal siliceous layer, which would be like this valve face. And then usually the things that are most silicified form first. So like it probably started building these things out and uh. this other valve face started building the other side out. But they, I think they have some organic um, you know, to, to deposit the silica, they have to have some sort of like, um, like you know, a scaffolding, a scaffolding. Yeah. So I think they have some sort of organic scaffolding that's in place that actually, um, provides that linkage. I don't, I don't know where it comes from, like which side it, it grows from, but, um, yeah. Cause the, what was, what was, what prompted my question is the way they, they join together reminds me of suture joints. Right, where it's not a, 
it's not clean. It looks like, you know, they, they reached out towards each other at different pace. Yeah. It's a little sloppy. Yeah. But they like line a, up like perfectly. A, yeah, like a suture. Like, yeah. because they were reaching towards each other instead of starting there and then... Yeah. My guess is they have to form from the valve face and then the, um, the costi, the long, Good news, rigid everyone. structures probably form next. And then yeah. when they touch each other, they probably start to actually like figure out like, oh, this is, this is the, you know, the piece I need to connect to. Oh, hey, cyanide, welcome in. Cyanide and then there's a question here. about microscopes from Moon, Moonim. Did you wanna? Uh, let's see. Uh, I have out. a microscope that I use for recreational purposes as a hobby. I'm not sure if this is the right time to ask, but as someone who does not have a background in science, do you have any suggestions for learning more about how to identify microscopic creatures, diatoms, radiolaria, et cetera? Um, yeah, it's totally fine. Ask questions about whatever you'd like, uh, Moonlim. Um, so for diatoms, normally what I would recommend is that you go to diatoms.org, um, which is a website where um, they will sort of train you if, you if you go through and read stuff on how to identify diatoms on the web page. Uh, it has all the glossary uh, attached to it with pictures so you could learn a lot of it and then um, it's, a, it's where sort of I point my students to when we first start training them on learning diatoms. And you could also look at their Diatom Web Academy, which is like if, you'd, if you're not a person who just wants to read a bunch of stuff and you want to have it sort of um, presented to you, the Diatom Web Academy is like um, scientists like me presenting our research, um, but also some taxonomy and a little bit of like, how do you tell the difference between like Stephanodiscus and Cyclostephanos um, uh, to people uh, as talks. And those are presented every other week. Um, and they started sort of around this time last year um, when the pandemic struck and then we couldn't really like meet. So we started, they started this um, Diatom Web Academy and um, so that's another place where you can get pretty good information about diatoms. For radiolaria and other things, um, I don't know what their web, web resources are like, but libraries have books on all of these things. Um, I don't know, where do you get your, your ID um, references from normally, Pacific? Um, so I have a bunch of books that I've been collecting over time. Um, that, you know, my go-to books, right? Identifying Marine Phytoplankton by Carmelo Tomas and A Guide to Marine Coastal Plankton and Marine Invertebrate Larva by Smith and Johnson, right? So I've got my, like, my go-to books, but there's, there's, um, if you just want to watch something on it, just to get an idea of what other people are looking at, there's Microcosmos, which is really lovely. There are some other great, um, Great streamers on Twitch, actually, here. I should do this, let's see if I can. Yeah, you could just also hang out here a lot. Uh, if you want to learn diatoms, I basically train people by accident. Um, I mean, also like Del Maximum stream, um, Pacific Plankton stream, you know, just being around it, you can absorb it um, pretty easily. And then you could ask questions, which would be nice. Um, you can also post um, pictures on our Discord, uh, either mine or Pacific Plankton's, and we have places where people can post stuff for identification. So that's another way that you could get some help. Um, and I, when I don't know an answer and Pacific doesn't know an answer and none of my friends know an answer, sometimes we just post stuff on Twitter or Instagram and ask, uh, you know, send it out into the ether and see if the ether has an answer for us. So. The ether had an answer for me on a crazy little jelly I found. Do you know what we're looking at here? I would like to say cylindrotheca, but yes, I don't know. It's cylindrotheca. Yeah. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It just looks so different close up and then... Yeah. <laughs> 
I was just waiting to see. I asked you last night, we saw one in the uh, light microscope, and I asked if you knew what it was. Uh, and I think something happened, and I moved on before we ever addressed it. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it, it's like the whole idea of me typing to try and get my words out through my fingers is not easy. <laughs> Um, I wasn't being judgmental. I just wanted to know uh, if you thought that was Slender Thika because I did have a Slender Thika in your sample from last night. So I was like, I'm pretty sure it's Slender Thika, but yeah. Uh, usually they have little mm -hmm. tiny curls on the ends, and I didn't see those on that one. But it had all the other characteristics that I would normally associate with that. So yeah. So Peachop says I work with a scientist that studies plankton, and I've learned a lot from her. Even though I'm just a coder, you pick it up after a while. Oh, neat, Peachops. I think this is true for you know, if you're around it, and then you just you, you get exposed to it. Um, I think it becomes interesting. And I didn't realize you were a coder, Peachops. I guess I don't know what you do uh, when you're not um, building your secret underwater lair, but. Um, I guess it's not a secret, is it? Uh, but yeah, you can, I mean, you can pick a lot of stuff up just by being around. And uh, I mean, my daughter is not a scientist, but she knows how to identify diatoms. And it's not like we ever sat her down and said, here's how you identify a diatom, because she's not going to sit through a lecture. <laughs> um, but uh, because my wife and I are both diatomists, um, she just sort of learns stuff by being around us and probably she also knows if I ask her hey what's this to say it's a diatom um, but I think she also kind of has a sense of what diatoms look like which is cool which is actually really interesting because so few people actually have a sense of what diatoms are or what they look like right well from a very young age she knew what they look like. She knew that that was a diatom when she'd see one. Um, and I think some of them she kind of knows, but she knows the genus names because we say them, you know, around her. Like they learn swear words, it's the same way. <laughs> um, you just have to say the diatom names with emphasis and, um, right. and enthusiasm <laughs> for people to catch on. Campylodiscus! Right. Just like you're mad all the time, and then I go, ah, Nitzia! Then she'll just yeah, start using it. As, <laughs> she'll start using it as a swear word. <laughs> yeah. Give make it a word of power. Oh I'm, my goodness! Last miles is reading with a party of 134. 134. Hello, Hello last miles. Welcome. Oh my goodness! That's a huge party. <laughs> Good news, everyone. Uh, what were you doing, last miles? What What's with the? Uh, what were you doing? You had 134 people in there. Everyone. Oh, I'll just give a shout out to Last Miles. There we go. And normally he's doing coding as well. Good news, uh, everyone. But I've seen him also sometimes just watching movies and stuff, so um, who knows? It could be anything. Uh, you never know. All right, Good I'm going to jump over to another sample uh, on this set because I didn't find the weird detillum yet. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Uh, we're looking Last at- Last Miles says, I was testing the free BSD release candidate on VMware ESXi servers with and without para-virtualized SCSI disks, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I don't know what any of those words meant. So there's that. But that's cool. Was it good? Uh, I don't know what this barrel-shaped thing is. I mean, I know it's a diatom. And it's it's Ellerbeckia. It's got a flat surface. I don't buy that it's Ellerbeckia. Why not? Oh, wait, maybe it is. Uh, yeah, it looks oh, I like think the you're right. other picture I, you took of Ellerbeckia. I think it's Ellerbeckia, because there's poker chips, right? Good news, everyone! Poker chip margin. Okay, I will accept Eller Becky as an answer then. <laughs> was it a test? Did I pass? It wasn't a test. Uh, there's no <laughs> tests. Uh, when I stream, we're not giving any tests. Okay. 
Oh, Last Mile says, uh, everything just works. Um, and the release was only done in the middle of empty streams, so it was timely. Oh. oh. And Tropical Geek's helping me out. S-C-S-I equals SCSI. Uh, oh, yeah, ah. SCSI, right. Yeah. Thank you, Tropical Geek. Alien technology. This is... Uh... I think maybe it just did to tell him with the spine broken. Oh, but good news, everyone! I don't know. Have we seen an inside of a Detellum? I know it's got lots of mess on it. So um, we did see the inside of one before. Um, oh, we. And not today. Good news, everyone! This is a Stephanopixis, just a just one uh. of the cells, and it's crazy little spines on its good mouth face, news, and then these. Um, weird little hexagon structures that it has over top of everything. Yeah, so that one's Turris. This one is Turris. Yeah, Good because news, the everyone. other one um, has only, I think, four of the, like, four or six of the connecting, of the non-knuckling spines. I don't know what the right term is for the ones that don't knuckle together. Ah. And... Sorry, I'm just trying to get this perfectly in focus as I usually do. Um, I don't think you can actually resolve these little holes any better, but of course it's a diatom, so here's the little holes associated with letting the nutrients in, and then this sort of weird superstructure over top of it, like Epcot Center, um, this sort of weird structure. And then we're zoomed in so close you can't really even see those spines that we were talking about, but these are the spines coming off of the valve face right here. So. Uh, Tropical Geek says that they can hear me like I was in their house. Uh, I'm not there. I'm here, Tropical Geek. But I guess I am here, there, too. You're everywhere. Well. Or right now. Hopefully not. <laughs> oh, wow. I think this is a picture I want to collect. I'm just trying to figure out the composition. Maybe a little closer. Somewhere in here. You've been streaming for two hours. Good news, everyone. It's all right. Uh, that looks good. It looks really good. Not so bad. Sometimes I do an okay job at focusing. Sometimes. Sometimes. Um, thank you for bringing all of your followers in, um, last miles, and also Volcano Doc earlier, so I've gotten two raids today, it's been Good busy. News, everyone. Um, I don't know that it gets any more enhanced than this Ivan, we're sort of at the, well, I can zoom in, uh, closer Good than where news, we are, everyone. but we're, you know, if we want to have a nice high quality image, I kind of need to zoom back out a little bit, um, so that, you know, you can kind of see the Epcot Center hexagons. Um, interdimensional Pacific Plankton. <laughs> yeah, Peachop says Discord audio sometimes sounds very low bitrate, but this sounds clear. And, uh, and Jan says you have a good radio voice. Thank you. I've heard that about me as well, so it's probably a nice combination for people. If they like the radio, that is. Yes, I love the radio. I mean, I grew up with radio. Um, I never listened to the radio. Really? I like to what listen to music all the time, but I don't listen to the radio because um, they usually aren't playing something I like. Oh, you have a question here. MT, MTO, the M wants to know, why is it so slow? Is the data from the microscope very large? Ah, so people usually think that the image is being downloaded from, um, from the picture, like it's the 1990s and we're on the internet, but um, it's actually building the picture as you see it grow. So um, a scanning electron microscope actually scans over the surface and then it's 
putting the information in at each place where it scans. And where it scans a little bit more slowly, it increases the resolution of the image. So it doesn't have anything to do with like the size of the data. It's, um, it's the rate at which the machine operates, basically. So if I had a supercomputer sitting here next to it, it would still produce it at the same rate. It's, that's how fast it scans. And um, it's building the image like pixel by pixel and in this case, our image that it's collecting is 1280 by 1280, which is up here in the top corner, you can see. I think you can see that. Um, and so it takes a little while for it to actually scan through the image because of the combination of um, how fast it moves when it collects the image and um, my beam intensity and the size of the resolution that I've selected. So all of those things kind of play together in the quality of the image that we get. And um, Stephanopixis is the um, organism that we're looking at. So I don't think you can see the menus that I open, but um, if I go into the menu settings for the image parameters, um, I can actually select for, for the save file, which is the one that it's making now, um, uh, I could pick image quality that was 16,000 by 16,000 pixels and produce a monster size image, but it would wow. take forever to collect that image. I mean, like, um, it would take a really long time for it to collect that image, but I could do it. Um, and then I could also change the speed at which the uh, instrument scanning. So if I speed up how fast the instrument scanning, like right now, I'm at the lowest the fastest speed or the lowest resolution, it looks grainy. So um, as I slow the speed down, you can actually see the beam scan slows down and the image quality improves. And each time I slow the beam scan down, the image quality improves a little bit more. So this is where we took the picture. This is speed seven. I can put it on speed eight and it will actually scan even slower. Um, and the image quality difference between seven and eight is barely visible, probably hardly visible to you at home uh, or wherever you are. Um, but um, the quality of the image here would actually be, you know, a, a little bit higher, like a little bit more detail would be visible. And um, but it would take 10 minutes to collect that photo. And if I set it to nine, which is the next speed down, you can see that the thing almost stops moving. Um, and that would take about a half hour to collect this image. And if I set it on the slowest setting, which is the highest resolution image it can produce, um, speed 10, it would take about an hour and a half So for just this wow. one image. And so we don't want to do that, uh, mostly because people would probably be like, we well, wouldn't want to wait around for one photo for an hour and a half. So that's like the setting that, oops, it's usually the setting that I put it on when, um, when I want to go to lunch and then come back and have something gorgeous done, you know, when I get back. Uh, I'll set it on nine, go to lunch, bring my food back, take care of some grading, do my email, and then look up and it's still only halfway finished. Uh, so it's not really the sort of thing that um, I want to stream, but uh, you could, and you definitely could. Um, the other control that you can change is the beam intensity, which is basically the size of the pixel, or actually really the size of the information that the, the, um, the scanner is the, the thickness of the beam. So like I like to think of, I like to explain it like a Sharpie, right? If you use an ultra wide Sharpie and you draw, it bleeds. And then the, the, um, the line that you draw is very bold and dark, but the, it also has fuzzy edges. And if you were to move to a normal size Sharpie or down to an ultra fine point Sharpie, that's basically changing the beam intensity. It's like how much of the information at that line is coming back for each pixel. And um, so we don't want the image to bleed too much. Um, if I put it on 10, the image will look brighter, just the same way that the Sharpie would look bolder. But when I start to zoom in, you can't resolve as much of the image. Um, so that's really sort of like the pixel size um, in a way, although it's not perfect for that. But there's less bleed the tighter the beam intensity is. Thanks. 
I know that's a lot of words for just like one answer, but. Um, no, but it was really interesting because thinking about it like that helps to understand how there's there's so many variables when you're zooming in and zooming out and the picture's drawing and you're thinking about the file saving. I put um, in my tags for my streams, I always put photography and there's a reason for that, um, which is what I'm doing is very akin to what you do when you make decisions of manually operated camera. I mean, it's basically the same concept. You have an ISO or something like an ISO, you have a speed, um, and you have essentially the aperture, which is your um, depth of focus. And they're all decisions that you need to make. They're just controlled slightly differently in, um, in the SEM than they are on a typical camera. Um, but they're still the same uh, concepts. And so, I mean, a lot of what we're doing is really equivalent to taking pictures. Um, and when we're done, we also have a picture, um, but it doesn't use any light. So um, it's just a picture slightly, with no light. It's a picture with no light, exactly. And I'm going to do a little bit of exploring this tiny little hole. <laughs> That is so cool. So that's on an Asteromphalus. That is Asteromphalus, and that is the, um, these are the associated with the Rumaportula. So we're looking into the Rumaportula tube, which is pretty interesting. That is amazing. Um, we're looking right down into the tube itself in here, and I don't know how f finely <laughs> I could focus that, but we could get a little closer. <laughs> um, so somebody asked. I don't asked, think we've like, ever had this view before. Yeah, it's hard to get the external views of them. Um, so I need to. It's kind of hard to get it in focus because there's not. Um, you know, the problem with it is not that we don't have the resolution, but that um, it's inside the diatom, uh, inside the hole. So the electrons go in, they hit the surface, and then the electrons come out of the hole, and just a few of them make it to the sensor at that spot. So it's, um, you know, it, the, the challenge is basically that uh, not a lot of the information is getting back to the, the uh, receptor. So. Okay, we got a couple of quick questions. So um, Asher Riddell was asking Rimacortulus, and it's Rimacortula, right? Rimaportula, yeah. Or you can just call okay. it labiate process if you don't want to use the science term. Not that that's any better. Right. And then um, Zenbor wanted to know about, um, can't you stack images in relations to what you were saying? Um, in, in a camera, it's relatively easy to, um, to take pictures at different focal heights and stack them. And um, that only helps with one aspect, which is basically the depth everyone. of focus. So your depth of focus could be, um, which is in a camera, your f-stop. Um, if you have a very narrow f-stop, then just a little bit of your image is in focus at the same time. And then you could stack images on top of them, you know, each one that's in focus, just the part that's in focus. And um, my camera at home Good does this by everyone. itself. Uh, I can just tell it, stack focus these pictures. And you have to have something that's not moving. Um, otherwise it can't figure out which things should be in focus, but it will stack all of the parts that are in focus together. And my camera in the lab, that's the stereoscope, actually does this too. Um, in the SM, we don't really need to do that. If I wanted to get a picture and I wanted more depth of focus, um, there's so much depth of focus associated with just changing the elevation of the sample a little bit. So right now I'm on, um, at, you can see below me, Good there's news, a, a view into the inside of the chamber and I can change the working distance. So if I made the working distance 10, and I'll just do it so you can kind of see it happen, um, okay. it lowers the stage down. And if you look oh, at the- Oh, we heard that. Yeah, that's the motor. Aww. Yeah, the, gr the grinding noise is the motor. Um, but if you, uh, so it moved the sample a little bit when we did that. But, um, but if you look at the, um, the working distance, now our depth of focus is 18 microns. And I could, for example, then get this into focus, um, even zoomed in relatively closely. And 
the entire diatom will be in focus when I zoom out. So um, rather than have part of it in focus or out of focus, and even when I zoom in um, relatively close, the depth of focus here is five microns. And nothing in our field of view is five microns difference in height in Z, right? So um, part of the reason I usually zoom in so closely when I'm actually using it, why we sit at five sometimes when we're on the streams, is because I'm often looking at some little tiny thing and having depth of focus doesn't help. Um, so I can get more detail the closer I get. And so it's always some sort of trade-off. You're always making a trade-off with like, do I want to get closer and have less of it in focus or do I want to have it a little bit farther away and have more of it in focus? And when you're looking at really tiny things, there's no value to being farther away. You're actually better off being close because you can see the detail a little bit. Like if you magnify things by getting closer to them, right? So um, that's basically what we've done here. We can get a little bit closer and basically magnify um, the image as a result. It's moving just a little bit when I do that. Uh, so so Last Miles is trying to post a link, but apparently the chat settings don't, don't allow link permitting. Oh. So Last Miles, if you wanted to post it in Discord, I don't know how to change the chat settings to make it show up. Yeah. Um, what's the link about? So Last Miles was saying, um, here's a custom-made CMOS chip I worked on way, way back when a SCM output was a black and white Polaroid film. Oh, cool. It does sound cool. Um, that's actually the type of SCM I learned to use an SCM on, was the old-fashioned Polaroid outputting scanning electron microscope from... Ours was from J-E-O-L. I don't know what, who made... whether they used the chip you made. Um, oh, you know what? Um, Jan was able to post the link. That's so cool. Thank you, Jan. Oh, yeah. It's because um, he's a moderator or a, a VAP. I think they get link privileges um, just built in. Would somebody join okay. the Discord? Okay. Yes. Um, oh, it's Mallory. That would be Mallory. Hi, Mallory. Hi, Mallory. You're on mute, Mallory. Hello. I went on mute. I was just peeping because you guys are live right now, right? Yeah. Yes. Now you're live. Yeah, that's that's why I wasn't going to talk. Oh. <laughs> Here I am. You just want to listen from inside the channel? Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Do what you like. Oh, this is nice. We're just taking pictures of things, you know, on Twitch, like usual. That's pretty tight. Yeah, it's not bad. All right, Last Mile says the chip was custom designed for signal processing inside Pratt and Whitney, where I was working on non-destructive materials testing and detection within airframes and jet engines and such, Whoa. way, way back. Sounds pretty amazing. Yeah, we really haven't seen very many good views of Astrophilus like this, where we could see all the external processes. Yeah, there's a beautiful one of the inside, which was pretty amazing. Yeah. You did a drawing of that, too. It's on your red bubble, right? It is. Yeah. You can, you can even see the pores right here. And over here. It's pretty nice. It is. Let's, Let's see. see. So, so I, I have, have a, um, I, let's see if it works. Hold on. I'm surprised to, uh, it's reached lunchtime and your family hasn't started demanding food. No, I, I, I muted. muted. They, they came, came in, in and I was, I was like, like, so there's, there's like a like hundred people <laughs> listening right now. <laughs> well, if you want to go get I don't lunch think or... they all wanted, I don't think they all wanted to be on, on the voice chat with us. Huh. That's weird. I know, it is, isn't it? I don't, I don't know, know why, why they wouldn't want to. They're welcome to talk, I guess. 
Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm looking, looking up what astrophilus means, like the the, the like literal translation, translation of the. Oh, uh, it's a uh, star-shaped belly, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I think, think so. I think so. so. I was, but, but you know, you as know, soon as I say it, then I'll second guess, guess myself, myself and probably. That's what you told us the other night. So. Yes, yes. which, which makes, makes sense. sense. Aster definitely means star. Here we go. Astro star Omphal is the navel. So it's star navel. Yeah, star belly. Yeah. Oh, and you've got some questions here. Or let's see. Um, Last Mile says, pretty amazing. Sleeping inside the labs with a coffee pot and night and day testing and measurements and maybe once a week a result that was progress. However, the tech was very cool. Um... Ah, Ivan wants to know, how much does the microscope cost? Everybody always wants to know how much your gear costs. Well, they probably want one, you know? Uh, Well, you know, if you have to ask... Yeah, scanning electron microscopes are expensive. And um, this one, which is the Tescan Vega 3, costs about $160,000. I think we got it at a discount because we're a university and also they knew that um, we had a couple of different companies that were interested in selling us a, um, a scanning electron microscope and we let them know that um, that they were in competition with each other and uh, so I think the price they gave us is not one that even if you were like looking for um, for buying one that you'd likely get Um, because the guy that was working for um, Thermo Scientific uh, who was also trying to sell us one when I told him the price he said I used to work for Teskin and that price is ridiculously good so he told me that he would go with Teskin if that's what they were offering so um, and that was our decision as well so uh, we got really um, a really good deal so I think it would probably be more than that for, uh, for a business that was trying to buy an SEM. Um, I mean, even if they knew you were competing, I think we got like a sort of lucky Daddy deal. A re up subscription by um, Last Miles. Well, thanks, Last Miles. And also, um, thanks for all the follows. I didn't really get a chance to sort of thank all the people that came in. We've gotten a lot of followers today and um, two pretty good sized raids and some subscriptions. So um, it's been a good day. Um, I should point point out that um, all of the um, subscription money that comes into the channel is used to support student research. So um, I don't take home money from um, from my streams. So what we're looking at right now is Stephanopixis again. And it's the other one, maybe. No, nope. it's, it's still, still tourist. tourist. It's still tourist. Because it has all those, has all those little. Um, so are those those ribiportula or? I think those are spines, but I don't know. Those are spines. I think they're spines. I think this one. They wait, look hollow. This one looks like a ribiportula to me, and these all look like spines. The flat ones. This one's rounded. Okay. If I were guessing, that's the rim of Portula right there. Okay. It could also be a broken spine. I don't know. But you're right. They do look kind of hollow. I think they actually have a, like a C shape. They're like a okay. pillar with a C shape, like a, a curled. Like, like half, half of an I-beam, I-beam kind of. of. Yeah, sort of, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah Taurus has, has only, only has like just, just not Taurus. This, this is Taurus, uh, Neponica, the, the other, other one. one. It, it has, has just, I think, four or six straight spines, spines that come off, that oh, interlock. Okay. It has, it, has it's, it, it looks like, like a weird cross between um, Stephanopixis and Odontella. Oh. It's, it's really, really strange, because it's round like, like Stephanopixis, Stephanopixis, but it has those, like, those straight, straight spines, spines like, like Odontella, Odontella does. Mm-hmm. It's really, really neat. neat. This is a pretty diatom, though. It is. 
Uh, last miles needs to run along. Yeah, I know how it goes. You just uh, you can go ahead and head out. I know you get like end of the stream. You want to just get going um, for sure. So thanks for uh, for stopping by and for hanging out and for bringing your crowd over. So I really appreciate that. This is Stefano Pixis. Stefano. Texas. All right. Not bad. Not, Not bad, bad at all. all. Really, really amazing. amazing. So, so cool. cool. Sometimes I do okay work. You always do okay work. I want more. <laughs> you want more work? <laughs> I want less work. Uh, well, is it really work if it's fun? No. Um, for sure, I, I could sit around on the SCM and uh, I'd prefer to do that than what I normally do. <laughs> Whatever I normally do is. That's the regular old Dittillon. Yeah, that oh, is. There's an internal view of Astromphilus. Yeah. Uh, the Starbelly diatom. Starbelly. And here's a giant. Oh, that's Whoa. interesting. Wait, look, look at, at those. those? No, no, it's dirt. dirt. Is this it? is uh, your whales eye or Walesi eye or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Look at the uh, the giant Walesiara that look like they're tiny on this thing. <laughs> they do. <laughs> it's huge. Yeah. That one came to play. That's a big one. Wait, gemstone, gemstone commentary? commentary? Sorry, I got, I got lost on something. There's, There's a gemstone, gemstone commentary? What? Um, um Mallory is asking about something. To Sorry, me or just to okay. chat? I don't, I don't know. know. I wasn't paying attention to chat for a minute. Oh, okay. Okay. Um. It's just Mallory. She can ask me later if it's for me. Uh, okay, okay, yes. yes. Does, Does Dr. Dr. Stone, Stone believe in the power of gems? That's what Mallory <laughs> wants to know. <laughs> what? You mean you like, like the, the power, power of being able to trade them for money and then being able to buy whatever you want with that money? Yeah, I think uh, De Beers is pretty powerful, if that's what you're asking. I don't think that uh, they can heal you or anything along those lines. Well, well they, they can, can if they, they can, can buy you trips to the doctor. doctor. Well, I mean indirectly. I just meant directly by contact. Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm with you on that front. They could definitely get a lot of doctor visits. Radioactive, Radioactive ones, ones can, can say Ivan. Uh, while Mallory's here, we should say thanks to Mallory for she prepped these samples for us. Mallory, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. This, this is, is so, so wonderful. wonderful. Yeah, it's hey, pretty Mal nice. I was just going to say, Mallory, do you want a hat or is it getting warm now? You don't need a hat. It's still a little chilly here. I don't mm. want to speak for her about whether or not she wants a hat, but... It's, it's pretty, pretty toasty, toasty, sadly, she says. Hmm, is not, not chilly. chilly. Darn. Darn. But, but you, you would, would love a hat? hat? I, could I could make, make you, you a summer hat, hat out of hat right cotton. Here. That you made for me. I wore my hat in. It's not that hot. It's not that hot. No, you can still <laughs> wear it. You can still wear a hat. Yay. All right. And, and Nolan, Nolan says, let's, let's see. All these microscopical creatures are beyond cool. cool. But have, have we ever seen how they, they grow? grow? What forces are in play when deciding their shape and texture? DNA yeah. is at play. For the most part, it's DNA. That's how they grow. I mean, that's, that's the, the, the DNA is the instruction booklet of life, right? I it mean, is. There are environmental factors, because I know if you grow these um, marine diatoms in culture, they do start to change shape. 
Right? They have weird things that happen to them. They lose some of their wild characteristics, like domesticated diatoms. Uh, what? <laughs> it's a big white splodge. Um, I mean, it's a diatom. Oh, wow. wow. It, it is. is. Uh, it's very strange. It's too bright. Is it? Carithron? What are these things coming out? Is this a catastrophe that's just stuck on it? Mm. I think that's just a catastrophe that's stuck on it. Cause that's the catastrophe spines coming out from there. I don't know what this is. I mean, I know it's a diatom. It looks like a giant shield. It does, doesn't it? I'm not sure what that is. Nope, normal to tell him. <laughs> I'm gonna come it's across really that right. one. Yeah, it's because it's so standing on its side, and so mm. a lot of the information that's the, um, a lot of the electrons are making it back to the sensor. That's basically why. Okay, let's see. Here, Here we, we go. go. Um, um, Jan, Jan wants to know, how, how fast, fast does diatom DNA, DNA vary? Pretty fast. Um, so, so what's, what's pretty, pretty fast, fast for you? you? Well, if you want to look at like organisms that have been shown to evolve over, you know, time spans, um, you know, longer than human lives, obviously, but like a fossil record that actually shows evolution diatoms are one of the few organisms that um, where we've been able to document evolution over a couple thousand years like within four thousand years um, they, they'll evolve or what you know what we would consider to be one species becomes a different species um, and that's pretty fast um, I mean like obviously bacteria and stuff evolve faster on some level. Oh, so you were asking about the inside of a detillum. Here's one. Uh-oh. Uncle, Uncle Bill, Bill says, says Pacific, Pacific is coming, coming through on two audio, audio channels. channels. Singing in the... Somebody's, somebody's listening, listening then. <laughs> it's not, not me, me, is it? It's just you and me in here. Sorry. Sorry. So that, that was... was so, so Uncle, Uncle Bill, Bill, is it any better now? Or, or is, is it still, still an echo, echo effect? effect? It's the inside of a Stephanopixis. Ooh. Huh. Here you go. Now it really looks like Disney's Epcot Center. And here's where the spines are. And now's our chance to figure out if they're actually Rimaportula. That's the rim of Portula right there. Oh, wow. And, oh, we're on beam intensity 10, that's why. It's like, why does it look crappy? Always the same reason. <laughs> so beam that's, intensity. yeah, beam intensity is usually the reason. All right, I'm gonna mute myself and run for a second. Okay. You want to check chat because there's been a bunch of stuff coming through if you're... I can go look at it, I suppose. Go have a pee. <laughs> I'll go see what they're saying. I'll, uh, maybe I'll take a picture zoomed in on this uh, internal on the view. Yeah. yeah. So I have a nice internal stuff in Apixis. And then well, let me get the in focus. Discobalia. All right. Apparently something's transcended because I'm echoing now. Uh-oh. Oh, that's weird. It is weird. Huh. Well, I can try and disconnect and reconnect too. That way I'll 
I didn't change anything on my end, so. Mm. Ah, Mallory's back. Hello, I came to bother you all with if it goes. Oh, okay. All right. I'm, I'm going to mute, mute me. Okay. This is exhilarating. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah, I feel alive right now. Do, I hope my voice sounds like the voice of God as well. I can't see any of the comments, so I'm just going to assume that everyone says that I sound beautiful and fantastic and amazing. Uh, they're saying you sound like the voice of an angel. Nice. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So what are they made of? Is it calcium composite? Null and reach. Diatoms are made out of silica. So we are looking at um, the cell wall of a siliceous organism. Um, they're algae, but microscopic. And, uh, and this is their, their cell wall. Oh, my mom just showed up. I got a dip. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. We'll see you. Say hi to your mom. Everyone, I love all of you. Everyone. Even. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> That's okay. Maybe it's okay. It's just me now. So, I could... just answer your questions I guess yeah it's how um, but the thing is she's been on the stream the same way the whole time so we didn't change anything um, suddenly it's just sort of bouncing through weirdly um, that's okay it's actually 3.30 so I probably am only going to do about one more um, image and then we'll call it a day probably so um, normally I only stream, I only intend to stream until about three. And um, I usually say that and then find some cool things around 3.30 that keep me here for a little bit later. But um, we've had Pacific Plankton for the last uh, two and a half hours here in chat. So also I don't want to keep her for too much longer. She's got family matters to attend to. And I got to start working on a lecture eventually here today. So, um, uh, yeah, let's look around for maybe one more thing. And, uh, you know, if I have to fly by myself, that's fine. I can do it, I think. Um, I'm trying to see if there's some more questions up here. see anything else that's really not relevant to this speaker issue so not worry about it for now okay we're going to zoom out I'll change the beam intensity back to 10 and change the speed setting to 3 and I'm gonna look around a little bit and see if I can find something cool for us to get another collected image from. This is another one of these Plagiotropus. There's a nice bacteria astrum. We saw each of these earlier today. These things that look like little spiders or whatever are Ketoceros. They're all over the place. There's a bunch of them. Um, most of the diatoms that you see here are Thalassia syra, the round ones. But there's many different species. Um, this is Stephanodiscus. Earlier we saw Stephanopixis. Um, why don't I jump over to sample six and see if there's anything waiting for us there that might be also interesting. So. Uh, this is a clean version of the sample from March 1st that uh, Pacific Plankton sent to me. And we treated it in nitric acid, um, so it's, at least in theory, clean. Oh. 
this is uh, I think a diatom that I was calling Scoliopleura, and I think that's what that is. And I told uh, Pacific Plankton that if I saw one, I could collect an image for her. So I might just grab this one real quick while we're here. So we have it. Um, first I'm gonna rotate a little bit. So it's a 45 degree angle and and I'm going to try to get the focus. And we'll collect a real quick image of this one. And I can hang out with chat a little bit. And then uh, we'll look for one more thing to, to image before we go. Okay, uh, I'm zooming down. Let's see. This is why everyone wears headphones in stream. Yeah, except for the problem is that um, uh, it's not me that's creating any sort of echo, but it's probably because she's talking and it's coming through the microphone and my speaker. Um, so there's just some sort of delay between when the sound comes out of the speaker and bounces through the microphone. So. It's a semi-ASMR experience. <laughs> Are these outer cell structures also visible in the light microscope in living examples? Yes. So last night I had some of these, uh, I had these same samples on my light microscope. We were looking at the um, fossil organisms or just their skeletons last night as well but if you go on to Pacific Plankton's um, oh it won't let you in that's interesting um, let's see well that's okay um, we're gonna stop pretty soon anyway um, I don't know why I won't let you in though um, unless Mallory changed some settings on the server, which is possible. Uh, like if I'm streaming, it won't let somebody in the channel or whatnot. Um, let's see, I can do this. That might let you in. Um, but, uh, Yes, so um, occasionally I will also put diatoms on my light microscope and stream those for, um, for through, um, through Twitch as well. So you can uh, definitely see diatoms at various size scales on light microscope in living forms. Um, and if you come to Pacific Plankton streams, which are Monday nights and Thursday nights um, around midnight Eastern time, you'll get to see diatoms every time uh, because they're always in her plankton that she collects. Uh, how do they produce sugar? Well, um, all organisms that are photosynthetic produce sugar the same way through photosynthesis, which is taking sunlight and carbon dioxide and water, and they take the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen um, from the water and the carbon dioxide and turn those into a chain through the Krebs cycle uh, into sugars. So it's just basically those combinations and they get the energy to do that from light, from sunlight. Scoliopleura. Scoliopleura. I think, because it's twisted. Okay, so that's a cool one. Here's a cool little Odontella right here. Um, that is a Diplonese. It's broken. It's like an internal view of a uh, 
uh, Cyclotella litor litoralis, which is um, something that they see, I think, uh, in these samples because they get a freshwater influx and it likes, um, it likes to have sort of a mix of fresh and salty water. So I'm just browsing around looking for something to image that would be a good place to stop with. And there's a lot of cool things on here. This is just Melisira, I believe. Um, I was also thinking maybe I could find that to tell him if I looked around a little before we ended as well. So I, mystery to tell him is in here somewhere, one of these slides. Um, it being quite large though and I think both valves were present so I'm curious as to where it would be that's an odontella that we saw before oops and I zoomed in on it ah here We saw one of these before, only it was a lot cleaner um, with this crazy sort of popcorn-y structure on the outside. Oh, and it's got two little holes on each side of the valve. Those are probably Rumiportula, would be my guess. We've seen that Odentella before. Hopefully Pacific Plankton is still in the channel somewhere <laughs> because I found it and I told you I would. And you see how it just has like a skirt. It doesn't have the little spines on the outside edge. And the valve looks a little bit different too. Um, so this is the detillum I was thinking of. And normally there's like a eyelash like structure around here. Um, but this one does not have that, and it's the whole valve. So this is a pretty interesting little, little guy. Uh, let's see, I want to probably end with this one. I'm going to rotate it back a little. Oops, that's the wrong direction. So I can get the whole thing in my field of view a little bit closer. That's too far, actually. Oops. is perfect for scale. I just need to come in and get some adjustments to the focus so that it's also perfect. And the beam intensity. So that'll clean up the image really nicely. And we get this very strange to tell them. Okay, 
So I'm going to set the speed to 8 for this one. And I'm actually going to lower the beam intensity down maybe to 5. So we get a nice high resolution. You can see a little bit more detail as I do that um, associated with this picture. And then everything's good to go. I'm going to go ahead and start that picture. It's going to take 10 minutes instead of our normal 3 minutes to collect. Um, and then while that's running, I can... Um, oh, you think it's a resting spore? Oh, okay. Totally possible. Um, it looks a little bit different than what we usually see, so no idea. And um, I'm going to find us somebody to raid which I think is going to be Rams Reef, because uh, they were hanging out in our stream last night um, doing a little uh, chatting with us while we were streaming and um, and uh, want to draw some attention to his, uh, his tank. Nolan Reach says, it was pretty exciting my first time here. I woke up to this because somebody uh, raided, oh, last miles, yeah. And I don't regret it. Uh, <laughs> interesting food for thought while I'm watching, because being honest, I'm not involved with the subject at all, but I enjoy it. Um, it's a lot of fun when you're not forced to do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Um, we don't... It's you know, it's, it's towards the end of the stream anyway, so. I guess I could move you in if you want to say goodbye. Uh, oh, I see you guys are in this Minecraft channel. Now you can, now you should be able to talk if you unmute yourself. nice because you can see uh, at the top the sort of little crenulated tip on the spine and then um, most of the detilum that we see have like eyelash like structures right here um, that are like little spines that go around the outside edges oh I'm back yeah you're back <gasps> yay I don't know if you sound like um, like a god or not though voice, voice of, of god, god no with the echo She's got a much, much more, more resonant, resonant voice. Oh, well, I'll, I'll you know, <laughs> I don't know that I get spoken to with a voice. Um, I usually just uh, take it from my surroundings, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, I think this is a resting spore. I've seen, um, I've seen some, right? They're more squat. They're really, and they're um, more silica highly silicified than the other ones. Mm -hmm. It's definitely more squat. It's a shorty. Mm -hmm. God voice is still there, says Uncle Bill. Yeah. Aww. I don't know how to fix it. Because um, you're just coming through the desktop here, so it's just echoing a little bit from the, from the microphone. Mm-hmm. I don't have any technology that can solve that problem for us right now. But um, the good news is the stream's ending, so you don't have to <laughs> echo for too long. <laughs> Still ethereal. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I was going to raid Ram's Reef. I think that's what I decided. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to get that going. Raid Rams Reef. And we can all go look at his uh, shrimp or whatever. The oh, shrimp, lord. shrimp. Shrimp Lord. The monster shrimp. And uh, I want to say thanks to Pacific Plankton for hanging out with me this morning. Uh, afternoon. Morning for you. Afternoon for me. It's and afternoon for me now, too. Yeah, it's been going on for a while. 
and um, we'll start it off in the morning and uh, for sending us these samples, right? So we got uh, some pretty cool stuff in these ones, as usual. And um, thanks to Mallory for helping prep the samples and for uh, Volcano Doc and uh, my friend Anne, who she was interviewing today um, for the raid and also for Last Miles for the raid and all those follows that we got. Um, I didn't track them very well, but I'm going to try to read some of them. Blendy Bottoms, SSK Very, Nolan Reach, uh, Lomos FX, Exagoras, uh, Mandora, Zanzix, Roll 1510, Mark Jones, FD3 Rotor, Omega Hack, Fast Jack, Casper the God Cat, Ivan MRCP, Last Chain, um, Has Hasnian, Hasnain, Zafar, Liddy, Bunny, B3 Luddy, Deep Earth Bound. Um, oh, I think, I think you, you just raided. raided. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> Perfect. And there's Ram's Reef. Morning, incoming rain. That was fun. Yeah. Are we still streaming? No. Are we? Did you?